Chris, did you get rid of your crabs in the end, or did they? <laughs> did the no. Work? no. Your mum <laughs> said sorry for giving me them, though. So that's good. Oh, it's so true. Fail. She gets around. She gets oh, around. Oh, fail! Was... <laughs> that was a good comeback. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey all <laughs> oh that's amazing oh, oh, guys. that's how it was we were being we were being like really slick really professional this time like we were ready <laughs> early everything was working we were just sat having a chat and it was like right guys we've got 15 seconds get ready like 10 9 8 let's go and then just bam crabs <laughs> like, immediately <laughs> how we roll <laughs> just all crips response that massive forehead contains many a comeback <laughs> a lot of practice <laughs> ouch anyway so evening how are we all doing so of course it's vodcast time again so for everyone that's Hi. new in all right then speak to me to it. Fine. introduce yourself then go on <laughs> no 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 you got this you got no, this no, you got no, this. <laughs> so for those that may be new in uh, obviously i'm aaron uh, and then below me we've got go on then liam go on then did you just put something in your mouth right as we were doing the like, introduction? <laughs> I am <I'm> out. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> all right. Uh, fine. I'll do it all then. It's okay. Don't worry. Carry on. Eat your, eat your Jaffa cake. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy that's currently stuffing his face rather than, you know, taking part is Liam, better known as Phoenix Miniature Art. He does also occasionally paint. Sometimes. As well as Sometimes. making a tit of himself on the internet. Uh, <laughs> and then we've also got Chris. Chris. Me. Me, uh, Chris. <laughs> me. <laughs> me. I'm Chris. <laughs> Ginger monster with a big old You're forehead. Who I am anyway. You know what I mean? And then joining us this, uh, this evening as well, we've got Josh, uh, better known as Omegon Edge, uh, on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, he is a oil painter, uh, mm. which is part of the reason... Other than the fact he's a lovely guy, um, we wanted to get him on to have a chat because it's a very, very different world and a very different way to paint. Uh, and to be honest, it's something that all three of us know very little about because we've not really done it. Um, no. So we've actually got quite a few questions just from us this time, let alone anyone in chat. So this should yep. be good. But Josh, if you want to, if you want to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you know. How you got into the hobby, etc. Oh yeah, gosh, George, George. hi guys. Yeah, I'm Josh, Josh Mallet. Um, I've been in the hobby, I guess, since uh, I'm 30 now. I've been in the hobby since I was 13. Um, but I took a break uh, in between, as many of you are probably familiar with. But you get into hobby, realize you have no money, end up having to stop uh, and then go to university, blah, blah. Get a job, have money, and then you're like, oh, I remember these things. Um, but I kind of like dipped in and out throughout those years. Um, I've always been very nerdy. I'm a game designer, game developer um, at the moment. Um, I work in a studio in London. And um, my kind of like first foray into, I say, war, war gaming and that sort of um, thought process was a bit of um, more time. Very When I was very young in school, we had a club and I was like, oh, these guys are a bunch of nerds. I'm never getting into that. Uh, and then I started playing games like Halo. <laughs> Um, and Starship Troopers, uh, and um, when I went back to the club, they had started playing with Space Marines, and I was like, oh, what's a Space Marine? And there's this guy, and he's got big blue armor and a giant gun, and shoulder pads that are way too big for him. Uh, and then he said, you know, go to the uh, uh, hobby store in, um, in uh, London, one of the hobby stores in London, and I went, and uh, they had this beautiful diorama. I think it was Marnius Calgar, and uh, they just released the Honor Guard with him. And they were on this like plinth, and you've got all these bugs, all these tyrannids climbing up. And I was like, oh my gosh. Star so Battle Troopers. from the Crag was the box set that they had released at the time. So that was my first, I think it was like fourth edition, 40k? Fourth? Uh, yeah, I think I think it was fourth edition. Fourth I think it was fourth, fifth. yeah. yeah. And uh, I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. So I got my little paint set with all the Marines kind of posed like that in different in different poses. And I was so bad. I I was like, why don't they look like they do on the on the, the box art? Why why can't I paint? Uh, so I kind of went in and out, deviled a bit, uh, got my mum to buy me as much as I could. Um, it's probably in the bin now. I don't think I've even got my first model anymore. I've lost it in the warp. Um, but uh, yeah, this came back years later. Like I said, got into um, Space Wolves, 
uh, and uh, got into Vikings, Space Wars, that kind of like mythology um, and history, and then just really got into it that way. And so I've just kind of been ingrained ever since. Got into a, uh, a London war gaming guild, like a gaming club in London, uh, hanged out with people from there, met a lot of amazing people there, and that pretty much kept me in the hobby. Um, I had studied at Bournemouth University at the time, and that's way out of London. So coming back into London, a lot of my friends had moved away. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty lonely here. London is a beautiful, large city, but because it's so large, it's kind of lonely. So the Wargaming Guild was my kind of way of like socializing as opposed to just church, um, meeting with people that were interested in my hobby and I could just nerd out about things with them. So yeah, I've just uh, kind of stuck in since. Uh, got really into the painting side um, I kind of got disillusioned with Warhammer 40k because of the um, 8th edition. It just became, this isn't fluffy at all. Uh, it's just like hordes and hordes of like cultists. I was a Chaos Space Marine player at that time. And um, no one was using Space Marines in their army. And then I was playing against Yanari and, El and Eldar and this moving and Tao was able to move and shoot and then shoot again and move. I was just like, oh, I can't play this. I can't, I can't do it. And then I saw some people playing Heresy and everyone's armies were fully painted, very beautiful. And I was like, oh, what's this? And then that was like, I saw like a, an echelon of moving away from the war gaming side um, to also gaming, but really high fidelity painting. And uh, one of my mates said it, it's like playing, you want to play the game um, on ultra settings as opposed to low settings when you play a video game and everything's like low resolution. And when you see people putting their time and effort and money into really taking the time and painting things really well, um, and also gaming, that was a big thing for me. So uh, I just basically got deeper and deeper, found out what Golden Demon was, painting competitions. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, it just led to me exploring. So, yeah, sorry. Long, long, uh, long way of saying, yeah, just jumped around met people uh, it's, it's funny how familiar that story is yeah i was thinking exactly the same eighth yep. edition is when i dropped out of it like um same with the whole with the exception of the university bit same with same with all the previous like as soon as i saw horus heresy around the armies were amazing i was like yeah let's get into that i played heresy for about three years mm. it's, it's exactly the same it's really funny in it yeah yeah you just like i think people's um interests shift around but you all got that familiarity and you start to see what's really important this hobby is for so many it's for everyone so people just mm -hmm. find something different to get into um and i think the books were a big part for me for like staying ingrained in the horror heresy so those those black books and the novels yeah, yeah. they kept it alive didn't they oh gosh yeah reading that in the bath i almost dropped one of my, my black books in the bath doing that Amazing. Threw it out. <laughs> Threw it out into the bar. Uh, but yeah, loads of just like, yeah, I just get lost in reading and reading those books as well. So yeah, I've I was so late to the the heresy like story. Mm. And I'm still like so far behind. I'm at a point now. You meant um I was talking to some guys offline, um, trying to figure out like, okay, speed run time. Like, do I actually need to read all 60 whatever books <laughs> of this? Or can I just, like, yeah. stick to the main plot? No, you've uh, got to read them, mate. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and some of them are, mad. I, like, now my full, I will have full bias on display here. Oh, the first few books, amazing. Fulgrim, yeah. absolute just mm. peak. Mm. <laughs> Descent of Angels, I was just like, oh, my oh, no. God. <laughs> Exposit is literally. Like, I don't care about the bloody stars. Yeah. All right, just like shut up. <laughs> I struggled with Battle for the Abyss. I thought it was a great book. No, I couldn't do it's it. So I, to good. this day, no. It's to this so day, I still good, couldn't yeah. finish it. No, that's terrible. I tell you what, I did like. I was never a big fan of World Eaters, but mate, Betrayer is the yes. nuts. Yeah. Oh my yeah. days, that is one of the best books. Yeah, incredible. Uh, that's, that's Betrayer come up. Legion, First Heretic. For me, yeah, yeah a big surprise you like Legion. Legion, yeah, do you know I, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't comment because I literally just said Fulgrim is the best one. So, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna point out straight away that all of the White Scars books yeah. are literally the best in the heresy. I can agree right. with that. Yeah, some really they are incredible. Scars is excellent. Um, mm. so it, it fleshes out the, the, the Legion for me, and so Alpha Legion. The reason I love that color, I love the kind of blue green, um, and then they were kind of purple for a bit. 
as yeah. well. Um, but I liked, I picked them because I wanted a, a legion that wasn't, um, didn't worship the emperor or anything like that, but they also weren't worshiping chaos. They were opposed and this kind of double cross, XX double cross, um, working against, uh, but working for and against uh, the, the, the Imperium. Um, that was a big part for me. And then just exploring how I could get that blue without using um, uh, metallic paint as well was a big part. Mm-hmm. And just trying to blend. And when I was doing acrylics, I'd spent ages just sitting there trying to blend for ages. Um, and I was like, oh, gosh, this is, this is taking too long. So use an airbrush. Of course, you can use an airbrush. Um, you can you can go through and use an airbrush. And but I wasn't able to get the, the the level of detail I wanted. An airbrush is very good for like larger areas um, and even some smaller details. But for the real pinpointed areas, uh, I couldn't find it. You guys are laughing and smiling. What's going on? Sorry, everyone's just slating me because I don't know anything about Horus Heresy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, Chris, looks, Chris looks absolutely lost and chat is just However, destroying him right now. Yeah. I have read at least eight books. I just can't remember because they're 12 years ago. <laughs> so so genuine question then is oils is the Alpha Legion. So so is the Alpha Legion the reason is what is that what triggered you to get into oils? I attended a class uh, uh, with Cult of Paint with Henry and Andy. Mm-hmm. And I was always into like Alpha Legion of Color, like I was saying, I was using airbrushes and acrylics and it was never really the level I wanted it to be. But mm-hmm. um, I thought for an airbrush, it's not not too bad. But then um, what happened? So at a class of Henry, he introduced oils to us and it was more for like grime and weathering. Um, yeah, he does it in very much the historical fashion, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, his yeah. sort of scale modeling. So I was like, oh, cool. Okay. And then just during um, COVID, I was like, well, I'm kind of bored. Um, I was kind of excited, wanted to do a bit more um, higher level painting. Um, I had never won a painting competition for like army painting. Um, I'd only kind of won like small one-off like miniatures uh, painting competitions. But um, I was like, okay, I want to get better, but I'm not having fun using acrylics at the moment. Is this all there is? Uh, And then um, I started to say, okay, well, let me try and see what happens with painting with oils. Um, and it was around the time I had started like my effort black alpha legion you know, units at the time. And, um, I wanted to like work on different colors of like black, gray, uh, kind of green, black, blue, black. And I started experimenting with oils. I was like, Oh, I can actually actually paint with this stuff. So I said, okay, I'm in COVID. I've been, it's going to be for a while. It looks like, let me experiment with just using oil paints. Let me just move my critics away for a bit. I'm going to use this time to get really good at just using oils, and then I'll combine them later on. And it just kept on going. I just kept on learning um, new things and experiment, and it was very easy. Um, so a lot of the time people complain about oils is the drying time and the worry that things take too long to dry. Um, but in the end, actually, uh, I've had to formulate ways to speed that process pre- process up so that the next day I can just work on it. Um, and because I'm f- working full time, I normally get like two, maybe two hours a day if I'm lucky to paint something. Um, but most oil paints can drive in three hours. So you can work on something, go to bed, wake up the next day, it's, it's on, or you can go for a walk, come back, and that little area you're working on is already dry for you to work on the next layer. But there are, because there are multiple ways of using the medium, a lot of people do use the more, I think, traditional way, which does take longer. Um, and you are there for like one section, you're there for like a day, you move on, you come back another day on, even if you're using red, you come back a week later. So I had to build ways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had to build oh, ways to sometimes. find, because the pigment is so um, pure and um the way they've like the kind of the way they build it using the oil and uh, the pigment is so pure that certain colors take ages so browns are extremely quick that can dry in half an hour um whereas reds um unblended can take up to a week so if i just applied red on a piece of um on a model it would just probably still be drying and curing um for over a week um but i've paid armies now in oils i've done like everything you've seen probably past 2020 is in oil paint and yeah so it works totally fine the longest thing is just getting used to using a brush understanding how things work and then time management within there as well so yeah 
So I have a question, and this is this is a, a, a deal breaker for me or not. How often do you have to clean your brushes? So okay, you know what? It's amazing, right? Because depending on how you choose to paint, you can. I okay, so I could literally paint with my brush, obviously, and then leave it for I don't know an hour. Yeah, and your brush. I'm liking this already. Wet. Your brush will still be wet. You can go out the house, go for a walk, go shopping. Your wife sends you, oh, go get that thing from the shop. You come back and it's still wet. The brush is still wet. I only clean my brushes when I switch colors or if I'm done for the day. And oil paints uh, have a misconception of being very bad for your brushes, but because the bris because it takes so long to dry, it doesn't damage the bristles. So you can use that brush for fine. It won't dry. It won't get into the the core areas. Um, even if it is does dry overnight, you just leave it in a bit of uh, white spirit, brush cleaner, some even some soap. That's like um, you guys have beautiful hair, so you'll know all about like the shampoo. <laughs> get some, get some shampoo, put it on, yeah. the, on the brush, and it will it will be as good as new for the for the next day or for when you need it to work. So um, I'm liking this a lot more, to be honest yeah. with you. So it's great. So like. There's a lot to it, and I've learned over the years that it can do anything acrylics can do. So what was easier for me was the blending, was the creating those blends rather than having to wait and layer up. So people say that, okay, you have to wait another day for it to dry before you can work on it. But actually, you've saved that time that you would have spent in acrylics slowly layering to get that instantly letting you then work on a completely new area while that area is drying and then you can switch back to it. So for competition painting, it's excellent because I know that maybe some of you guys like to work on sections at a time rather than a whole model. So it's very good for that because you can do a leg while that leg is drying, you can move on to a shoulder and then you move back to that leg for the second layer, build it up, move on to another. So it just means your workflow is very different. Um, yeah. So it's been it's, it's been great. It's uh, I've never really looked back. There have been times where I'm like, oh, I can't use this medium, um, and barely anyone is teaching in it. So it really yeah. forced me to, I guess, do a lot of research. Um, and I released that uh, guide, that hundred page guide for free, which is when during COVID I was just reading loads, going to um, traditional fine art paint classes, talking to people that like oil paint in fire and just like portraits. Um, and actually learning how the medium works and then applying that to my miniatures. Um, so I'm totally self-taught in, in that regard with, with oil paints. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just worked out. It's, it's worked out really well. Do you ever find yourself tempted to go back to acrylics for certain jobs or parts or <laughs> is it just oils only? No, so for army painting, um, if I do like a broad stroke, if I've got a lot of models to paint, I will do all of the, I'll block out the main colors in acrylics because it's easy, it's fast. And then any kind of like details, or if I want to enhance the volumes or bring more uh, saturation to a certain area. So you've got transparent and opaque paints, same as acrylics, I'm sure. And then transparent paints are used for really embolding and oversaturating colors. So they're similar to inks in that way. Um, and you can mix them with an opaque color to really bring the saturation in uh, or do skin. So things like skin, um, if you want to get a bit of a tint or do some glazing, the uh, transparents are great for that. And so I do that on my acrylic painted miniatures if I do army paint. For competition, though, I just start from gray and build up, build up from there. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. Like, has moving to oils has... Sort of did you have to learn a lot of color theory alongside to be yep. able to work with them so well? Yeah, yeah, a lot. So it's funny because it, it unlocked a lot. So when I was, I guess, a bit more less experienced um, in miniature painting, you have the GW idea of, uh, oh, you need this layer paint, then you need this highlight color, then you need this color, and you slow, you have, you have to have that pigment, you have to have that paint. But with oils, they're a bit more expensive. You can get some cheaper ones, and they're not so bad. Wins in Newton are a cheaper brand. But there's a lot of colors, a lot very diverse. But just through blending, you discover new colors. I was like, how did I get that? If I mix orange and a really the Prussian blue together, uh, I get black. How, how did that happen? Why is that? So I, it forced me to actually start experimenting, start looking around and like, oh, OK. And once you have that theory, you can then apply it. Um, 
but a lot of my experience has just come from doing it. Like you can read what you want, you can watch all the tutorials you want, but if you haven't got the physical brush control to do it and you're not practicing, and that comes with game design as well, if you're not actually making things or being creative and making things and exploring and making those mistakes, uh, you just, yeah, you're not picking up as much. So yeah, it's really important. Yeah. 100%. Would you, would you say it's, I mean, I guess first part of the question is, mm. Have you? Do you go back to acrylics at any point nowadays, or is it just strictly oils like across the board? Uh, so for it depends, like how time time scarce I am. Like if I want to do something quite quick and I don't need to spend a lot of detail on it, or I know I can enhance it a bit later, I'll do a quick airbrush of acrylic um, and block the color in. And then if I need to add a bit more detail, I'll go in oils. But for the most part, like my acrylics just sit there staring at me asking me to use them um and yeah no never barely ever now barely ever i can everything i need to do i'll do in oil paint mm. um so i have a question mm. with oils do you ever find yourself limited in creating textures for competition pieces because the way i imagine oils work is the majority of the time what you're going to get in my head anyway is very smooth results mm. Mm -hmm. Is that actually a limitation that there is, or is there ways around that? Selfless plug, I did a tutorial on hard lines with oil mm -hmm. oil paints on my YouTube oh, channel. Okay. Check that out. Cool, cool. Uh, no, like, we best. will be doing all the plugs, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so when I, I used to think the same, but then I, when I look mm -hmm. at canvas painters who traditionally paint oil paints, um, they do all of this amazing texture. And all of these hard lines, all of this, um, like, I don't know, there's a, there's a guy who does, who's been, um, I think he's from Japan, who's doing amazing, really amazing um, portraits of women to the point where he's able to do, like, gene texture completely using oil paint. Um, but the way to do that is to understand, again, how the workflow works. You can't, like, do all the blending and then try and do hard lines straight away. It has to cure. Um, one way of doing that is just varnishing over it but you work in layers. So you'll have your base layer where you'll do all your blocking in, all of the main volumes and all of that, and then you'll let it cure for, for a day. Uh, and then you'll come back to it the next day. And then once that layer is dry, you can start doing hard line scratches, texture, weathering, um, um, all of that. Yeah, all of that can come in. It's just the workflow is different. But I think mm. where people get, tr they trip over is the, Oh, I've blended now and I want to do like some hard lines, but then it blends on the brush yeah. and you're like, Oh, why has that happened? So you, people give up. Um, what some people do is that they just varnish the model and then they go back to acrylics and add all of those texture there, which is fair enough, easy way. But um, because of the way I've, the way that I've made it work for me, I don't need to do that anymore. So all of my scratches I'll do with um, oil paint, all of my um, highlights, uh yeah all that all of that you can still get that very impressionist um brushy texture with oil paints if you if you if that's what you're going for cool interesting on the topic of um varnishing um i've known a couple of guys who have tried painting with oils and obviously there's a sort of glossy um effect that comes with it mm -hmm. how do you sort of manage that um, or is that just a case of whacking the varnish on and going again so I had a really funny moment. I just painted Samus and uh, he was like super glossy. And I was like, why is he, why is he glossy? I've put all of this stuff down. And I just ended up using the wrong varnish on that model. Um, it just wasn't working. Uh, so I then knocked it back with some Winsor Newton uh, matte primer and that worked. Uh, however, there are some models like my Crimson Fist, which I didn't need to matte down at all because I was using Scale 75's brand. And Scale paints are very matte. So when they dry, they dry totally matte. Um, AKs are quite glossy because they're more for um, weathering and um, they don't actually label like fin glossy finish or matte finish. You just have to figure out as you're going. Um, but once you matte it out, I think oils look really bad when they're glossy. Actually, I think it hides a lot of the detail. Um, so once you matte it, you're like, oh, I can actually see what I've done. Oh, it actually does look good. I remember painting, uh, I was painting an Alpha Legion unit I was like, oh, this looks so bad. And I went and woke up the next morning. I was like, oh, oh, it's dried properly. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's what it's meant to look like. Okay, cool. And I just went from there. So um, 
I guess if I had done my research ahead, I would have been like, oh, okay, yeah, I just need to might, knock it back and might it, but you're just learning as you go. So that's the way I get around it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you always see those videos of people who do sort of tra traditional oil painting on canvas, mm. and it gets to the, the varnishing stage, and like all the colour just comes back, and you can see yep. all the volumes, all the actual true colour of it. Mm -hmm. um, must be pretty satisfying. Oh, it's, yeah, it's nice. Um, I learned that on one of uh, my projects, Katsumi from Big Child Creatives, and um, even when I was like teaching in classes, uh, just saw people like having that realization moment. It's like, oh, it's dried. It looks a lot better than I thought it did at that time. Um, so yeah, it's nice. Well, trust the process. Trust it. That's it. Exactly that. Trust it. Trust in your process and. When you don't have anyone to learn from, that can be very daunting and discouraging. Um, and you're searching. And then if you, if I'm honest, you do look at some oil painters um, and you look at their work and you feel like, oh, that's not really for me. That finish, I don't really like that finish. It's not. So you've got nothing to kind of aim for. But you believe and you hope and you see, you know, because uh, in fact, actually, when we, when we went to um, FMS, Mm -hmm. And yeah. I saw there were a lot of um, busts painted in oils. It was like, ah, okay, like it does exist. Um, and Henry, Henry Still, come from Cut of Paint, he explained to me that there are a lot of like of the elder generation who painted in oils. And when they found that people were painting in acrylics, they were like, what are you doing? Like, why are you painting in acrylics? So it's almost for me at least, it's kind of come back around. Um, and it seems like there's been a, a resurgence. People are playing with oils, trying them, couldn't really make them work, didn't like the finish and just kind of gave up. So I've started trying to do classes to kind of show people actually there are ways, there are use cases where it can be really, really mm -hmm. useful. It's not like the best thing since sliced bread. Um, it's got its like pitfalls. Um, and but I think both oils and acrylics have their challenges. They're just different. Um, yeah. And uh, if you could sell White Spirit to children, you would probably see it in a Games Workshop store. Um, and I really think Contrast Paint, when, we, when I first played with that, I was like, oh, this works similar to an oil wash. It just dries faster. And I think that's what they were trying to replicate there. Um, because oils just gets into all the recesses. You don't have to really do much. Um, you can obviously be very technical if you want to be, but it's just got that versatility, I think, to allow you to do what you want. So yeah and you I, I appreciate we've got a list of questions that we need mm. to get through and we're going off on a tangent here but how do you feel about do you think oils have different strengths let's say at different scales like for example you did the big child samurai lady mm. which, the green I'm one she looks amazing yeah nice one that's good timing and then like you've got say for example your your lawgar mm. um like Lorgar's not the best example. Let's say the Terminator Captain. These are two very different scaled models. Mm. They're both lovely, but do you feel like maybe oils lend themselves better to the larger scale or the smaller scale? Or like if you're, you're talking about those people who are painting busts in oil, yeah. yeah, is is it is it a stronger medium for larger scale in your opinion, or what's your thoughts? So the brush strokes like require a bit more surface area, mm -hmm. and if you know how to flatten your brush properly to pull because with um with acrylics again where you lift the paint is where most of the pigment will be dispersed and left yeah. behind and that's what we are taught to like blend towards where you want to leave the pigment with oils it's opposite because actually what you're doing is you're blending away and you're spreading it like toast like on butter on toast right got you. so when you have a larger model uh you're able to you're able to get away with more you don't have as much time on smaller models so right. for example, doing faces, I find really, really easy because getting that blend is just quite a very small brush stroke and it's done. You don't have to yeah. kind of blend up. Uh, whereas capes can be more tricky because it's a larger surface area and it feels a bit different. But for Katsumi, for example, I have found her leg, doing her leg really easy um, because I worked up in stages. And I think... One of the things that people get trapped on is like, okay, I need to paint the entire model with one brushstroke. I used to do that on, and I need to go the full way down the entire model. But with oils, it's really like take a little piece, like you apply the paint here, for example, and then you'll just blend it in that area. And then you'll do it again, apply it, blend it in that area. And doing that on a larger model is definitely easier. Um, 
but for the most part, I really enjoy, I want to, you know, I want to enjoy Warhammer as the, um, as a setting. So I enjoy painting smaller things, um, but I've got a lot of like, my backlog is huge. I can, you can probably see that angel behind me. Um, I think she's from Mindworks Games. I've got another yeah. bust, um, the Spartans. I think they're called the Noble Spartans from Big yeah, Child. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like looking at them like, oh gosh. I, I, <laughs> looking I at you as well. Them. Yeah, they're like they're painting. Them right behind you. <laughs> but I still haven't painted that box set for Horus Heresy yet. It's yeah. just sitting there. It's been there for two years. I've just not been painting no. it. Um, so you're gonna be yeah. painting old world anyway, ain't you? So what are you uh, doing no! self-destruct well i mean i think it, i think it, it's um I know, that's gonna be instagram for what the next two months three months it's gonna be yeah. like you're just scrolling it's just like oh bretonian 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 yeah. oh yeah. tomb king, tomb oh. king. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter like, shut your face there's nothing wrong with it it's nothing but good <laughs> right bretonians everywhere if you don't like it get out Oh, so on the topic, <laughs> bye. On the topic <laughs> I have to ask this question, and I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for it. Have you ever painted any Middle Earth models? And would oh, you? Fuck oh, why are they the best models? Why you got to ruin every vodcast oh, with good, this shit? I was very tempted when I saw Andy's. Um, what's his name? The guy on the horse. Everyone's going to cuss me. Elrond. Elrond. Yeah. Elrond. Elrond. I'm not a huge. Lord the of only people. good Lord of the Rings model. Yeah, the the, yeah. the only good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is beautiful. But then I saw the scale and I'm like, oh, oh, that's so small. See, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Josh is literally the nicest person in the community we know. And even he's telling you it's shit, Chris. <laughs> no, even he's yeah. telling you it's shit. No, no, Stop no, asking no, about Lord of the Rings. Not no, it. I'm just saying, no, I'm just being oily elf. There are some really elf. Models, and I would like to try... <laughs> I would like to... After play, painting some Legion Imperialist stuff, which is just so tiny it's ridiculous um yeah. i thought it's like okay you know what? I'd, I'd love to have a go i think there are some really nice models there they just they seem a lot older like they haven't put as much time uh, not time that's not true but as much they haven't invested in it as much anymore yeah, um, so there's just less interesting models to kind of go on but there was a um an l high elf standard bearer in a similar armor to elrond which i thought was pretty cool yeah yeah, yeah it comes well. with that Horse sand, and I thought that's awesome. That's that's great. That's great that they've done that. Um, so there's a temptation there, but you know we'll have to see where Golden Demon, what their kind of categories are going to be. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> let's not let's not get into that Golden <laughs> Demon today. That's been a topic of discussion. I was, I was just about to say after after the day that social media has had. Oh, oh fucking, topic, fucking like... bullshit! <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolute <laughs> fucking shit! How long we got? Yeah, no, we don't want to go down this rabbit hole, do we? Oh, amazing. Um, but I think everything has its place. Um, mm. If it's like, if it doesn't make sense to use an oil paint on a model that small, there's no point. There's really no yeah. point. Let's go to acrylics. I think everything has its strength. But to go back to your question, Liam, like busts are very good because of, again, because they're larger, you can get away with more and you can take your time. And I think that pressure release of, oh, I can actually really spend a long time on this model because the medium is allowing me to do that and it's very forgiving. And the biggest strength is being able to just rub away the paint um, just with some spirit and clean it away and start again rather than having to strip the entire model because you've got some like build up um, of hair follicles or, or dust that's accumulated on the model or just a brush stroke that didn't dry properly oil paints you can just remove that and start again um so that's been really freeing um in that sense and if you don't like something you can pull it down um as long as it's not been varnished and cured for about like over a week you can you can just reactivate that oil paint but once it's dry it's hard you'll have to strip it it's like really hard and that's why oil paints and canvases are able to survive for so long because they keep their brilliance Whereas in an acrylic, when I apply that on, you need it to you need to keep applying the paint on for it to get that brilliance that it had when it was wet. Whereas an oil paint just keeps that regardless of being thinned or not. Um, and when it's dry, it keeps the same brilliance or the same saturation. So I'm a very much like one of the things I do when I'm painting um, is to paint the model and then stand a few meters back and see if I can still see the contrast. I think I think uh, it's called like the squint test. People call mm, it squint and they see. Yeah. So I stand like a few meters back and see if it pops from that distance, I know, okay, I've got the contrast right. And then as that scale 
goes up, you have to kind of bring that down for it to make sense. But for smaller miniatures, um, yeah, you contrast, especially in army painting, that's what you, you kind of need so to draw the judge's eye. How do how do they um, how do they work uh, as a medium for army painting? Because obviously the, the the sort of timekeeping aspect of it. I mean, I, I suck at army painting at the best of times, let alone with oils thrown mm. in the mix as mm. well. So how, I guess how are they? Go on, go on. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Go ahead. Well, how how long? How so? How do they work? Um, right. So I painted some. Uh, I had a client and I painted some word bearers for him. Um, really lovely guy. Uh, and he think he gave me a couple of months, maybe a bit longer to, to do him. Um, because I was wanting to move more into competition painting, I just spent a couple of evenings per deed, and they were done. And I broke out that way. Um, so I, like, again, I dry, br dry brush, I airbrush everything, um, apply the paint on that way. But let's say you didn't want to just paint one by one with oils, you could easily do your, um, what I see some people do is they apply the airbrush colors, the acrylic colors, block them in, and then they apply a wash of oil paint and they'll take a sponge and just rub away the, the raised areas, all the highlighted areas where you want the volumes and they'll leave the shadows. And because of the transparent paint being so full of like saturation and depth, um, leaving that in really adds to the brilliance of the overall model. Uh, and then once it's dry, you can varnish it and then apply your uh, metallics if that's what you want to do, or just do non-metallic metal, which is stupidly fast. Non-metallic metal was a really? big thing for me. Um, I really sucked. I didn't, I'm too harsh. I didn't, didn't suck, but I didn't enjoy doing it in acrylics. I sucked. I hated it. Um, so doing it in oils was like, oh, I can blend. I can get that volume. I Oh, I can pull it exactly where I want it to be. So it's actually faster for me to paint in non-metallic than it is for me to try and do um get the same control with uh tmm instead so yeah huh that's so I to try that now well uh, i mean uh, well, yeah all I mean all three of us are like uh, mac like nnm fanatics so the moment mm -hmm. you say oh i find it quicker and easier i think all of us sort of stopped and went hmm? <laughs> 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 of course, i perked up quite a lot then <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you guys actually have the theory and knowing where to place the highlights, which a lot of people struggle with non-metallic metal. They don't know where to place the light volumes. They don't know how light travels across the surface of um, a metallic or even a glossy surface. Um, and once you have that theory and you know with oils, it's literally... So, for example, you could just you could uh, work in the workflow. You place your highlight, leave it. Place your mid-tone, leave it. Place your shadows... And then once that's done, you just blend it and you're done. And then, oh, not saturated enough, let it dry, come back the next day, add another add another layer of transparent paint. Um, so when I say layers, it's because oils work up in layers. You can do one to two if for like basic army paint or, or rather basic competition. If you want to go higher, you can go up to like six levels of, um, of layers and continually add detail. Um, so sometimes I feel bad because like I can spend a couple of months on a model and it's done and other people are spending longer, but I'm, it's cause I'm further ahead. So I've actually got that time if I need to, to go back and paint. So sometimes I, for me, it was like, am I spending enough time on this model, but I'm already ahead of where I need to be. So is there more to kind of go back on that? I get distracted. So I just work on something else. So yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I never do that. But yeah, I think for anything, for for any kind of organic materials and for non-metallic metal, uh, oils are just brilliant. Um, but the way I paint for capes and um, skin is very different for how I'll paint a space marine, for example. So um, I had to form a new um, way of like working with oil paint in order for the paint to look hard. So Liam, you mentioned it looks soft. Like it kind of, kind of dries looking very soft. So I had to develop a new way of making it almost look like it was done in acrylics. Um, so you can't tell the difference. And I think at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you use. It just depends on what works for you. But by building what I call the prime glaze, it's basically a glaze you apply over the model first. And that came from watching canvas painters. They seem to like 
put this sepia wash over the canvas and then start painting. Yeah. And what that yeah. does is it lets the, it primes the surface, it removes some of the coarseness of the, the surface that the paint has to go over. Mm -hmm. And then it lets the paint and pigment stick. So as you dry brush that paint away, the pigment's left behind and the oil is drained away. So it's, it dries a lot faster and it dries very flat. Acrylics um, dry because they're plastic. They dry incredibly fat, flat, right? Um, oil paints naturally are a bit more clumpy and thick. So by forming that way, I found a way to actually make it dry really thin as well, whilst removing the kind of time, waiting time of having to blend up step by step to get to that point. Um, so that's how I did the space marine. Um, that's how I do all my space marines in that way. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's lots of tricks you can do. Artist grade, for example, you don't need to do any acrylics at all. You can just apply that because there's so much pigment in it that it will just sit and stay there. But for the more mid-level paint ranges, you'll need to do, and I prefer to do an acrylic undercoat first so that um, when I rub a paint away, it's still opaque. It still keeps that pigment there. So I'm not having to kind of fight against the, the kind of uh, brush strokey translucency that you kind of get with some weaker oil paints. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, so you've mentioned it a few times that the... Mm -hmm. There seems to be a definite uh, sort of quality consideration within oil paints. I mean, it's the same with acrylics as well, but mm. I, mm. it almost sounds as though it's more so within oil. Yeah, it feels oils. more important the way you're talking. Yeah. Are there any particular brands that you, I mean, you've, you've mentioned AK being obviously more geared towards weathering. You mentioned Scale 75s being obviously tip, quite matte, which is the, very much their shtick, even in acrylics. Mm. Are there any other sort of standouts that you would recommend, say, to someone looking to get into oil paint? So I would say start with Winsor Newton because they're easy to get a hold of in the UK, um, and they're pretty good for the price range. Um, and the artist, the thing is, like, I've had the same tube for two, four, and since COVID, actually, the same tubes. I've never run out. I've never needed any tube because you need such little paint. Um, I think if you're a canvas painter, you'd go through oil paint a lot faster because you need big yeah. blobs. Um, but for us, acrylics, you can just do a little drop and then it's you do what you need, what you, you do. And then you can freeze it. You can actually freeze the paint so it just stays there. It won't freeze in the sense of like it just turns and you can't use it anymore. Uh, it just doesn't respond to the temperature. So it just sits there. And then you take out the freezer, the water melts away, and then you can just continue on painting. So I barely ever need to change my my tubes. Um, that's pretty with, cool. Uh, Sminkers are also really good brands. I think it's from Russia. I think, um, but it's very and it's very 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 strong. Um, lots of pigment in that. Um, Old Holland is the best, but expensive. Like you, a tube of um, cobalt blue can go for like fifty pounds, which is. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> it's mad. It's mad. So Wins and Newton have done. <laughs> when you see the words hue. When you see the word hue, it's not talking about the color. It's specifically, it's talking, they've copied, they've made a synthetic version of that color, so it's much cheaper. So rather than being 50, you can get it for 10, for example, and it's a okay. lot cheaper. Uh, so a lot more manageable. Um, so yeah, so there's some colors that uh, you definitely need. Cadmium, your cadmiums, your cobalt blue, earth tones. Um, but when you mix colors, you can make ones any anyway. You can just make them yourself. But they're not going to be as strong so an orange mix with cadmium yellow and cadmium red will never be as strong as just pure cadmium orange because it's been built that way to be very pigmented, um, which yeah. is, I'm guessing is the same for acrylics as well, just normal color through. Um, yeah, yeah. But I've been, even though scale, scale colors are not artist grade, they don't have enough pigment, I love the finish. So I actually mix them into my Winsor Newton because they seem to just dominate in terms of their the, the matte. So Winsor Newton's dry satin, then adding that matte paint in just and mixing it actually um, and because they dry a bit faster uh, because of for modeling they dry faster so mixing that in allows me to just paint really quick and get through things faster um, while still keeping the pigment strength of the uh, artist grade it's so, yeah. interesting it's like an art lesson and a science lesson yeah <laughs> <laughs> learning because oils don't when they dry they don't um because they don't dry, they don't. The water doesn't evaporate from them, right? So they they almost form this um, layer of skin, and the model the 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 paint is actually oxidizing underneath. 
So that's why when you try to paint on top of it, you almost see this little film or tear and it starts to blend automatically because it's not done. So you can actually get this really interesting effect if you apply thick paint first and then apply thin paint on top. When that thick paint, that thin paint will dry faster. And so the thicker paint underneath is still drying and will start to crack. And that's why you see on canvas paint some like with this crackening across the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because the person who did it wasn't adhering to what we call the thick over thin. So you always build up in thin layers. And that takes me back to why I do that glaze first, because it allows me to continue layer up. Um, so if I'm just like... No, no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, I'm finding this well interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, We're not I'm normally just, this quiet, are we? No. Normally we've got loads yeah, of practice. It's so just listening. It's really interesting. That, that's, that's how you know that, yeah, we're, we're listening is we're oh, actually okay. quiet. Normally... <laughs> The way this tends to go is right. there's some questions, then we take the piss out of Chris a little bit, then there's some more <laughs> questions, then we yeah. probably bully Chris again. Um, oh, yeah. Chris. Well, I was going to say, I've been waiting a whole hour and I've not been able to make one oily hair joke about Liam. Oh, so. that's oh, not you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. Oh, and goodness. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, I mean, has there been anything, a question for you guys, what has... Obviously, you guys are all like very high level painters. What has stopped you from exploring? Have, have you explored? And if not, what stopped you from trying oil paint? So, um, do you want to go I, first, Aaron? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a notorious glazer. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. it's, it is my thing. Mm -hmm. and so the main thing that's always stopped me is the drying time. Because when you're sat there glazing and in, in, you're know, using the acrylics, it dries like literally as you're putting it down the where you start your brush stroke is already dry by the time you finish it yeah um and because it's such a, a slow incremental process if i have to wait even just a couple of like that extra like 30 seconds mm. to a minute between mm. each one it's mm. going to add up so fast but on the flip side of that if you can then get around the issue of blending you're just using a different mechanism for it, then I guess it kind of addresses the problem. Yeah. Um, truthfully, I have accidentally tested an oil paint because I didn't realize it was an oil paint. <laughs> 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 I bought it, I got it here, put it on the palette. I was like, why is it, bit, what the, what's it doing? Like, what, it looks like super hydrophobic. What's going on there? And I was like, ah, it's an oil paint. <laughs> oh, that's, crazy. that's why it doesn't work. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. How hard uh, though? So someone in chat has just gone. How did I not know it was an oil paint? <laughs> I didn't read the label. I, it was in amongst a sea of acrylic paints. Yeah, and it was blue gar like that one. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was magenta. It was oh, a magenta. Right. Yeah. In amongst everything else, I was like, "Yeah, I'll try that. Why not? I'm not familiar with that one. Give it a in go." Got hunt, it home. I was like, the... "Aha." <laughs> That's your hunt for the perfect magenta. I remember you telling me this at lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Fen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oops. Turns out that doesn't work. But so, uh, yeah, for, for me, it's 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 time. Okay. For me, it's it's kind of texture. It's a word I use a lot because it's um what I like to kind of build up as I apply like highlights and sh mm -hmm. uh, shadow. Um, I sort of control that texture and the noise of that texture um, as I apply more and more layers. Um, that's predominantly how I paint a lot of different surfaces. So the same process for NMM, same pro process for cloth, just changing the, the brush strokes to achieve a different sort of look and feel. Mm -hmm. um, so doing that through oils would be an interesting process. Definitely not impossible, but like you say, probably something that is more additive where you do the volumes first and you bring the texture in after. Mm -hmm. um, but I've grown up watching uh, James, do you know James Wapel? Yeah, the before, yeah. yeah. So obviously he paints a lot of Lord of the Ring models. I've only mm. watched him for years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always kind of tempted me, especially when he does a lot of work with like OSL and yeah. atmosphere and um, that kind of stuff. It's like, that would make a lot of sense. And I probably would learn a lot from the process doing that as opposed to just using, you know, like we say, out of the pot uh, acrylic paints mm -hmm. that are pre mixed. Mm -hmm. um, but in this sort of uh, last two years, seeing different YouTubers and including yourself, 
being able to do sort of shortcuts and tricks to painting like armies or even just single models. Like obviously Marco Frisoni as well. Marco, yeah. yeah it does kind of um, tempt you. So I feel I feel like I'll definitely give it a go at some point. And if I do, I'm going to be uh, harassing you on Instagram. <laughs> 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 just, yeah, just, you're just going to get a picture of this mini that looks like it's been finger painted and there's a message from Chris <laughs> going, I need help. <laughs> This is so, or you get the other message where it's just like, okay, so for real though, do I need to call an ambulance? I, I've been using cadmium and I forgot I can't lick the brush. Uh, <laughs> it just it's collapse. Yeah, it's like, you'll, you'll learn yeah. as you'll learn. You can't lick your brush so quick. That really stops that habit. Almost, into, I remember licking um, my brush after painting something. I can't remember what it was, but the taste is so foul. I was like, oh, oh gosh, yeah, never again. Stopped cut my habit in, immediately so yeah what about you liam i think I've, I've toyed with the idea quite a few times and interestingly enough it's the, the same as you chris i remember seeing james Papel a couple of years ago and thinking do you know what this looks like a lot of fun but i th the the thing that always puts me off is i'm just so far down the current rabbit hole mm -hmm. that i'm in with acrylics and painting and the problem is, I always think, you know what, when I get to a point where I'm quite happy, I'll, I'll maybe try. But one thing that I've realized is the better I become, the less I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, the better I get, the more there is to learn. Yeah. And I'm always like, I'm, I'm so far down. I'm like five years down this rabbit hole of display painting with acrylic paint. I'm finally getting to a point where I'm like, do you know what? I'm actually happy with my work. If I go to oils, it's like starting at the beginning. And I know it's not quite that extreme, mm. but that's what stops me. Mm. is it the uh, are you more of a person and it's a question for all of you are you guys more of people who prefer the journey or actually just the result of actually reaching that place or do you enjoy how you how long it took to get there at first result but i'm trying to train myself to enjoy the process mm. uh, these days mm. for, yeah i mean for me i've i've learned that the result means very little and the, the only reason I say that is because it's so fleeting. Like, let's say, mm. for example, if I paint something today, mm. like, I might play a game with it, but I'm never going to really look at that paint job again. Everyone else is going to. Yes. Do you know what I mean? If I take it to a competition, that result's going to last longer. Let's say, for example, we go to a scale model challenge. That's three days. Mm. I'm going to enjoy that result for three days, but then it's gone. Mm. So I tend to find myself enjoying the process, absolutely. But the problem with that is that that focus on the process also comes with the frustrations of the process. Mm. When things aren't going well, all of a sudden things like that, that hits you harder. But yep. when things are going well, like the model that I'm painting at the moment, like I showed you earlier, like that look, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that. Like I'm proper buzzing about it. And I have been buzzing for a week. I've been yeah. painting that for a week on and off yeah. and I'm proper buzzing about it. Once that model's finished, I'm going to look at it once. It's going to sit on my shelf and I'll never look at it again. But when, when that model starts going badly, I'm mm. going to have a breakdown and I'm going to have three or four days where I'm just like, yeah. I hate the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, we just have so much time invested. So it's, it's oh, yeah, I'm, wow. I'm very much process. Yeah. So true. I, I think I learned that very quickly. So when I was trying with acrylics, I had gone to classes and really good, like uh, Andy and Henry are brilliant teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting there. I was getting there. I was never, never really happy. Never really happy. But I, I could see. Okay, I could see why it's really fun. Um, but I think what really put me off and scared me from doing oils sooner was exactly what you said. That like I have to start again. Um, and then I had a very interesting time at my my first job out of uni, where I was in the job for a long time, and I I wasn't that happy. In that job i was i was kind of doing it because i was so comfortable I'm not saying that this is any of you guys but it's just something that pushed me to try something different i was so comfortable for such a long time yeah and um i was scared to try something new what if i fail what if it doesn't go right right um am i going to reset my career in a sense like yes you are going to have to start again but it was uh once i did that um it was like oh this is actually really fun so i worked on need for speed then I worked on Battlefield, I worked on Candy Crush, now I'm working on a completely different game. And so by doing all of these different games and working on all of these different things, it's opened my mind to like, oh, actually restarting and trying something new isn't that hard. But then I had to go through the master of one 
um, which is you probably heard the saying, "Master of uh, Jack of all trades, master of none." Yeah. Yeah. But it actually, the actual term is ma- "Jack of all trades, master of one." And the reason yeah. for that is because it's okay to be T-shaped. Something again, I learned through my career. It's okay to be yeah. T-shaped, but you need that thing that you're really good at and that you focused yeah. on, and that's your thing. So it's okay to pick up other skills <clears throat> and you won't, what I had to kind of see is like, you won't lose anything. I've still got yeah. the knowledge of what I went through of developing other games. I've still got the knowledge I have of painting in acrylics, but I'm trying to master oils. So if I ever need to use an acrylic, I can, I can be excellent at using acrylics, but yeah. if I need to be a master at using oils, I can. So what it does do is gives me another tool set. So when you leave the mindset of I'm going to lose the skill I already had and built up over years and i'm going to forget that stuff no it's all transferable it's just another medium that works slightly different i think so. it's that thing that we always talk about where we're like do you know what if you're if you're hobbying and you're you're a painter you should like it, it there's a massive benefit to branching out into other forms of artwork whether you believe this is an art form or not if you branch out into sculpting if mm. you branch out into kit bashing if you branch out into digital canvas uh, digital artwork canvas work all of these things will massively help you so yeah. i do see where you're coming from with it and i i do agree with you as well i think with i suppose the other thing that's, that that comes into the decision is is there really a benefit mm. that's the other thing like yeah. is, how much is it yeah. going to benefit me to use start using oil paints so it's it's not so much just of oh it's just going to be a bit of a reset because you make a good point and it pretty much invalidates that 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 argument as such but there is also that point of is it going to benefit me if i learn to use oil paints actually could i just use that time to learn to sculpt which is what i'm trying to do so it's, it's it really is an interesting one as well um it's a good point yeah. sculpting and painting are, are very different whereas mm. sculpting you're forming the shape for miniature painting the shape is already formed so you're i mean it's not color by numbers but our canvas is already built for yeah. us and we're just applying the light to that canvas whereas if you're right if you then say okay i'm doing acrylics and i want to switch to oils you're basically doing the same thing with a different workflow but it depends how much that's why i asked at the beginning how much do you enjoy the the journey mm. of okay learning something new do you enjoy that um and not to say you don't but if if you don't see actually i don't see the point of this end result i'm not gonna pick it up then that's fine mm. and for me, it was the it was the opposite. For me, it was like I don't enjoy your critics anymore. Um, I'm gonna try something new. And had if I had reached like golden demon level and been really good at acrylics, would I have made that decision? If I had stayed on that journey and really dug deep, like I did with oils, would I have made that decision? I don't know. I maybe maybe I'd be like I'm not gonna try something new when I'm already so deep in this. But I just think at that time my mindset was okay, I've tried, I'm trying a new job that I thought I was too scared to do. Let me try something else and see how that goes. And oh my gosh, it was hard. I had so many people say, what are you doing? Oil paints belong on canvas. Don't paint with miniatures of oils. There's mm-hmm. acrylics for a reason. Blah, 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 and all these things. And then I won a, a competition. Um, and I was like, oh, oh, it's possible. And it's just like, oh, it's just, it's just paint at the end of the day. It's just another yeah. million like the there's no limitation the limitation i guess is just how well you're will how well you're able to use the the brush control how well you know the theory how well you've applied it how convincing it is um and actually it's the stuff around not so much using the medium now it's the stuff around it it's like okay does that highlight match up but does that make sense what's that brush stroke actually for is it is it meant to be like light or is it just meant to be is it a mistake and doing that well um, and actually being able to do that convincingly, like someone said to me, I had, um, I went to, uh, what was it? Not SMS. It was, um, oh gosh, what's the competition called? SMC? Salute. 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 It was Salute. Salute. Yeah, That's yeah. right. And uh, one of the judges was like, yeah, it's really good, but what is this? And I was like, uh, like, he's like, what, what is that supposed to be? And I was like, just a, just a brush stroke. He's like, oh yeah, but it looks like a mistake. So right. I'm yeah. gonna have a con- I'm gonna have a controversial opinion here. I'm gonna oh, here we go. Right. Listen to me. Go. I'm not gonna mention any names, does. right? I'm not gonna mention yeah. any fucking names, right? But but uh, the, the 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 judge but. that you were talking about, right, is actually a friend of mine, mm. and his painting is excellent. Okay. 
but there's 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 no entertainment and discussion about brushstrokes like that's that's not the feedback that you get from him he doesn't want to see brushstrokes right mm. brushstrokes are amazing like I, I don't give a fuck brushstrokes are amazing they're beautiful when they're done well if someone looks at a brushstroke and it's intentional and they go what the fuck is that then that's their problem not yours i don't give a fuck <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's yeah. bullshit absolute yeah. bullshit anyway it's I'm funny what you say about um the people sort of that secondhand <laughs> doubt and sort of other people's insecurities about ever trying oils trying mm. to put you off doing so it's a testament to your willpower to ignore that and Mm. persevere the thing yeah. is though is it's it's, it's, it's like that saying isn't it a person who's more, like the, you turn around and go so people will take the piss out of you for going to a gym but a person who goes to the gym will never take the piss right a rich person mm. will never take the piss out of you for wanting to be rich mm. right so it's, it's exactly the same if you've yeah. got no one who paints with oils everyone's going to be like what the fuck are you doing but actually in reality <laughs> what's going to happen now is anyone who goes oh, i'm going to paint with oils you you're going to be the one who's going fucking damn right you are yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> do it. Uh, you got this. Yeah. yeah it's it's and we haven't had that. Like, it would be nice just to be able to go. Like, if someone says, oh, "I want to use oils," I'm not going to go. Yeah, I can help you with that. I'm going to go. You need to talk to this dude. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? There is a reference for it now, which is great. Thank you. It's, Thank you. it's the same as uh, as anything, though. Going back to the sort of attitude from others, like the second someone tells you how to hobby, or mm. says that your form of hobby or art is wrong. That's the mm -hmm. that is the exact second that I stop listening to them. Yeah, I'm just like, I agree 100. No, I just don't care for what you've got to say anymore. Yeah, like yeah, 100, yeah, percent Aaron. Brennan yeah. um, actually told me uh, Brennan from the group uh, BB Miniatures. He's called mm -hmm. and yeah. actually someone oh, really great. interesting. So if you want to talk to someone, he's a big mentor of mine, a friend of mine. He's he's really good. And we have a lot of conversations about this subject because I was like Brennan. I, I can't do this. I, I can't use oil paints. Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm never going to win any competitions and they look terrible. Um, and he just said, dude, like, you've just started. But going into the social media thing and people's opinion, like, okay, yes, I've got, I've, I've got quite a few followers now, whatever. It's great. I'm so glad that people do that. But at the end of the day, I can't bring those people with me. If I log off um, Instagram, I can't ever talk to these people again. Like yeah. my life goes on, their life goes on. It's not a big part, but this whole thing of people's opinions and social media for us, we have that pressure on us. We have to be good all the time. My yeah. next work needs to be, if not better, just as good as the work that I've done previously. I'm not allowed to have bad work. I'm not allowed to show something where I'm just experimenting. Oh, I need to get all of the likes and um, the people pleasing um it says there's a description in the bible that says like the need to um what was it the need to uh validate men is a thief of joy the need to like please people is still your joy because they're like oh i can't try this new thing because i'm so hung up on of how i appear to people and as commission payers it's hard for us because that is our that's our portfolio that's our work and people just see the model, they're like, oh, this guy sucks. I don't know. They won't even read, read your <laughs> Yeah. You're saying, hey, guys, trying yeah. something new, just exploring. And they don't give a shit. They don't, they no. don't look. But again, like, because they just look at the picture, which is fine. Like, I get yeah, it. I do yeah. the same. Like, I don't read the captions, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, I think when you say, who is this hobby for? Is it for other people? Am I doing this for others? Or am I doing it for myself and sharing that? with other people, you have this moment where you're like, oh, actually, it's not a problem. I don't care about that anymore. I can just enjoy it. And I needed to go through that because it got really bad when I got started getting sponsored by Warhammer uh, official. And I was like, gosh, everyone knows who I am now, blah, blah, blah. You get this really like me, me, me. And it took a while for me to come out of that and be actually like, no, no, I'm the same. And the same person I was back then, I don't need to worry. And I think probably, People, not saying I'm famous, but people who get really famous, gosh, it must yeah. be so hard for them because suddenly they can't even walk down the street without someone saying, hey, I know you. Oh, you this person. They only know you as that person. Um, it can be really bad for your mental health. So Brennan was a really big part of me and my wife being like really encouraged to say, okay, it doesn't matter. But we all go through it. We all go through that moment of I need to be really good. Um, especially if you've won a golden demon and then suddenly the next year you don't win anything. Um, 
so yeah it's a mindset thing and attitude thing but when you know you're not doing it to please other people you're doing it for yourself it's your hobby and like you said Aaron, no one can tell you how to hobby suddenly it's very freeing because if i was worried if i was more worried about what people thought of me than me just wanting to try something i never would have picked up oil paints i never would have learned what i've learned i've never would have tried to start actually painting better and be teaching people and have all these experiences if i had just said oh yeah, these people are right. They must be right. Um, and it's something that carries through you through your career. When you meet a more senior person, they give their opinion. Oh, they must, they're more senior than me. They know what they're talking about. Oh, no, actually, no. But sometimes, like, no, they're completely wrong. Uh, and, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, ran, I ran over. Sorry. No, we, no, it's fine. Really uh, no, I it's like that a lot. The, the last point in point. particular. Yeah, the last one. <laughs> that one, that one made me track like. I was doing oh a, yeah, we've all been there. Oh yeah, I was doing an internal cackle there, just like. <laughs> oh yeah, you're a really big name. Like everyone loves you. Oh. You just said what? <laughs> yeah, let's move on, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think I think I know what you're referring to. And yes, there were a, there were a few people at that point in time where it's just like, I am very disappointed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... But we've all been through that, right? You guys aren't good just because it came overnight. You probably had a lot more failures than you had successes to yeah, get yeah. you to those successes. And a lot of the time you're like, crap, that didn't work. And it won't work for months. And you'll be like, yeah. what am I doing? And then suddenly, and that's exactly what happened. So for me, it was that that purple captain, I think he's um, a soul drinker. For me... That was where suddenly it just clicked. I was like, oh, oh, I have to I have to add a glaze onto the model. This actually works. Oh, well, I've been not thinning my paint, my oil paint for the past two years because everyone says don't thin your oil paint. Oh, this is a, a lot better. Oh, oh, I can paint finally. And you have that moment like, ah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and you... Euphoria. Yeah, you have that that's kind of your that ethereal because you're like, oh, and you had to push through to get it. Um do any of you guys rock climb at all? Do you bouldering? Aaron, you do. Yep. Right. So Aaron, you know that moment when you have a project and you're like, I can't climb, I can't climb this, and you come back for like a week after week after week and you're trying to get it before they shift it. Yeah, before the reset. Push, before they move it, they're like, Oh, I have to get it. But you've now improved because you've been you failed at it so many times oh god yeah so, like, i mean that's it like, yeah especially like for any of the climbers that are in chat or watch this on youtube like the the, the climbing analogy that 100 percent rings true crimps mm. like getting that pinch strength took so long <laughs> so <laughs> long <laughs> like, yeah, yeah so many failed sessions and blisters and mm. injuries and then you're like oh wait I can hold on to the wall. Oh, this is way easier now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, uh, it's, it, yeah. You're, you're not wrong. This is, I've never actually, I've never drawn the analogy between the, uh, the, the reset rush, um, and the, the mini painting, but you're not, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that's, that's it. I think there's a lot like stuff just in life. Um, and the other thing is always going to be someone better than you. There always is. There's going to be someone who just comes out of nowhere. Uh, no one's heard your name before, and suddenly they're just doing things much better. But you, you don't see the thing with social media. You never really see what someone's had to go through to get to that point, or where they've come from to get to that yeah. point. Um, for some people, it's all they have, so they can put all of their time in it because it's all they have. They don't have um, loving family members around them. They don't have. They hate their jobs. Um, so you can take, if I say comfort, it's everyone has their crutch that they have to kind of work through. Everyone has their thing that isn't going great. But that's why social media can is great, but can also be very bad if you forget that this is just a snapshot on what it took to do. They, they didn't go through the hours and hours and hours of that color not working or this brush broke or you spill. I once dropped a model I'd spent um, hours on in um, thinner. I had the thinner lid open. <laughs> it, just, it, it just slipped off. It slipped <laughs> off. Why, why are you painting over an open pot of thinner? Oh, I learned my lesson. It just slipped. <laughs> I was cleaning my brush. I was like, okay, let me just get up. I slipped and it went 
It was perfect. It was it was just it was it was too perfect. It was too perfect to just oh, like that's so, yeah, devastating. A that's friend funny. of mine once dropped his uh, Titan <clears throat> that he spent <clears throat> at least two hours painting. And got a pin. Yeah, that might have been me. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I just like. I genuinely thought you were joking when you were like, no, I dropped it. And I was like, dropped it. all right, yeah, but how bad? And then when you sent me the picture of it, like in multiple pieces with the <laughs> base upside down on the floor, I was just like, yeah. oh. <laughs> so what got me, do you know what got me about that whole thing is the build one, did not yeah. break. The Titan broke, right? The pins yeah. broke the resin. Yeah. Oh, you, can, right? you can see the feet and the little <laughs> pins and then everything else is gone. <laughs> My build was perfect. I was like, like wow, well, part of me's oh, kind of proud no. of that. Because I remember it back you Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll put it back together. Okay. You just looked up. You did not just put that back on the shelf that it fell off, did you? Yep. Liam. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. What's his the YouTube shelf. on it? <laughs> Liam. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, at least fine. Josh at least Josh learned to put the lid on the thinner, yeah? yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's fine. Yeah, well, I just I just don't go near it anymore. It's it's just the model. See, this is the thing though, like this is what we were talking about earlier. Like it literally means nothing to me. Like I smashed a Warhound Titan that had what two months worth of pure work put into it. Mm. I smashed it and it I literally laughed. I didn't care. Because by that point, like it means nothing to me. So it's no you, longer important. Yeah, once you've done it, you're just like move on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate. I would be having, I'd be having a meltdown. No, I don't. Absolute like meltdown, it. mate. Chris, and I know for a fact, Chris goes mad because right there, I've got my Colossus, my Carflos, and my Stormcast all on a on a open shelf. Oh yeah. That I walk past every day. Like if I knock those yeah. over, I'm just like, oh well, they're going to bin. So they're going to bin. <laughs> He's done that a lot. Oh, yeah, I've done that a lot. Yeah, I have. Liam, just, don't care. just, just <laughs> buy a cabinet. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to know the, the interesting bit is I have a cabinet. I just haven't built it yet. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. That's fine. It's just, yeah, they're just, just they're just models, mate. They, they literally like, it's just the model. That's, I think that's it. Um, I have a very good friend, um, Spanish painter, Norison Cruiser, I think he's called. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I just, just oh, he's so good he's very good and he just said to me josh you just you don't need you don't need to be any better you're fine where you are no i want to be better no no it's fine like because i think once you reach that part you start actually it's not that Im important anymore um that's the way he felt it but when you're hungry for it because you haven't reached suddenly you're like i need to do everything i can to get to that point but yeah, it's this thing. There's a once you get to the top of the summit, you look around and it's like, yeah, it's kind of empty. Um, and it has to be. That's why I fell more in love with the journey as opposed to reaching the spot. Because once you're there, it's like, ah, uh, yeah. So interesting. I feel better that way. It's it's, oh. it's weird because I'm the pro the process is important for sure. Like, if you didn't enjoy the process, then you you. You, why are you doing this right mm. like, if you don't enjoy what you're doing why are you doing it but at the same time for me i mean i, I make no secret of it i've said it before you know, I, i'm a competitive person so for me it's always all right let's find a bigger summit uh right. what's the next one yeah, yeah. Okay. it's always like okay so how do we how do we do this again but bigger yeah um, i remember you said that to me yeah mm -hmm. yeah but as I, I'm uncompetitive, it's it's. I mean, it's, I do get that. People. I am exactly the same in that regard. <laughs> like we've talked about this a lot in We Aaron. Yeah. yeah. So then, where does your joy come from? No. <laughs> Are you asking Aaron that or me? I'm asking both. Yeah, yeah, both of you guys. Oh, go on, and Chris, go if on. you're the same, if Chris, you're all the same. That's right. I'll, go, I'll go. I'll go first. It's fine. Just always making sure I'm one ahead of Liam. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to dodge the question because, like, demon trophies, these are trophies. I realize I'm not the one to comment on that. I was just about <laughs> to say, I'm gonna take like, a shot anyway. <laughs> kids in glass houses, like, what? Oh, oh. Man, holy shit. <laughs> Mustache from someone in chat. Thanks, Maces. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Oh, go on and then uh, jo jokes aside like what where does my joy come from in painting mm. 
Do you know what? It's a really good question, and I genuinely don't know the answer, right? Because once upon a time, I thought, oh, I'll win competitions, and I'll win trophies, and I'll get accolades, and that will bring me joy. And the yeah. fact is, although I haven't, like, we joke around about a GD, yes, I was close. Although I haven't won that, the other things that I have won have meant a lot. But they literally mean nothing to me now. They haven't changed anything. They sit on the shelf, and I never look at them. Right. My pieces that I finished that I'm genuinely happy with, like the Stormcast, Colossus, like I never look at them. They don't like they they literally nothing. So when I'm painting, if I'm painting, like I'm painting the 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 current project that I'm painting, I'm really, really happy with. Like I've got a week of every time I sit down and I paint and I'm like, this is the nuts. But then I could have three weeks of painting that model and I'm like, I hate this. Like it's just not where I want it to be. So I, I don't really know where it comes from. It's like sporadically when things are going well, while I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this is great. But when they're not going well, I'm too much of a emotional person to oh, be like, mm -hmm. oh, I can find happiness in this. I'm like, I'm going to smash the crap. Out. Like so many people have literally seen me throw models across the desk. Yep. Right. Because yep. uh, I'm, I'm just quite an emotional person. My mind is like complete chaos. And I am like as much as I can lock it in quite a lot when I'm, when I'm painting, I'm, I'm the stroppiest person ever. Like I can, if I've got a hundred hours into a model and, and things go really, really badly and I don't stop, I will throw it. Yeah. Yep. So it's a really hard question for me to answer. Cause I don't have a positive, I don't have a positive answer. Like I think about it and I go, well work. I love my work. I'm so lucky to do this for a living. Um, and I love teaching. There's no downside to that. But when it comes to video content and that sort of stuff, I'm really happy to do it, but it doesn't exactly bring me joy painting a space marine and going, this is how you paint space marines. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It brings me joy to be going, I'm going to paint a full non-metal metallic model, or I'm going to do this amazing display piece. But there's so many ups and downs on that process. Like, I can't say this is why I do it. It's weird. It's a hard one. I wish I could give a positive answer, but I can't. I ain't got one. <laughs> no, honestly, it doesn't, doesn't need to be positive. I think it's don't want people to be... Oh, it's great because it's not. It's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to to have the mindset of sometimes of the question of like, what am I doing? Why the thing I is, it changes as you're a professional as well. Like, yeah. as much as I hate to bring that up, like, mm -hmm. so you were talking about. So, so there are there are different stages for 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 a professional. Like, if I paint a commission, mm -hmm. I know for a fact I can paint that to the level that that someone person's paying at, but uh, paying for, and that's bang on. But I can still look at it and go, I can do better than that. I don't want to send it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I can, I can like, I haven't posted on social media for three months because I haven't got anything that can top my last work. So I'm like, well, why am I going to show everything? Why am I going to show anything? But at the same time, that's damaging my business. And then there's like, so there's all these sorts of pressures where it's like, it's, it's not like the, all, all you are, are when we're naturally, we naturally focus on the negative things yep. because it's a survival mechanism. Yep. So I don't think, oh, do you know what? I've released a video every week for the last three months on YouTube. I've released a video every every week for the last three months on Patreon. My content is so much better than it used to be. I don't think of that stuff. I think, crap, I didn't put a, I didn't put a Patreon yeah. video out over Christmas because I took a week off. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I focus on. Yeah. And that's how yeah. our brains work, but obviously. The same again. People don't see this. They see the, the, the caption. That is social media they see they see the tip of the iceberg as opposed to the chaos that's going on underneath yeah but i mean i i, I guess oh, the, the counterpoint to it though this is kind of what josh was touching on earlier with the whole you only ever see the most pristine perfect well presented version of mm -hmm. something and we when you know when we're when we're streaming on twitch like we something that comes up fairly often actually in conversation is the whole on a on a YouTube edit, uh, you only ever see the perfect cut. You don't mm. see the cut where the mini went horrendously wrong, or you're like, <laughs> "Oh, my camera wasn't even in focus for that." Brilliant! Like you don't yeah. see that side of it. So, yes, all right. You know, Instagram being a very visual medium, uh, and it mm. is all about you know, ooh, look at the shiny, shiny. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with posting something that's not necessarily the best thing you can do different tools different minis like if you're happy with it and you you like it the chances are someone else will if that's the focus like post it anyway Why not? i agree but remember this is yeah. this is from from the professional standpoint right so that mm -hmm. stuff can only hurt you a, a weaker post with with less um interaction 
will damage your your interaction in the future. Uh, a, a weaker model is not going to attract as much interest. A weaker model is potentially going to, or a change in tact. Like Josh, you'll, you'll know this from the Alpha Legion, mm. right? As soon as you start painting something which is different to what people followed you for, mm. you'll lose followers. Like this sort of stuff comes up. Now, I 100% agree with you when it comes to when this mm. is your hobby, who cares, man? You do what you want to do, but there, it, it does change. And this is why, like, there was a post on MVM Metal the other day, the Facebook group, and the guy was like, I've been taking commissions for six months and it's just completely ruined me. And and it's the perfect, perfect example because people just don't understand that it's a wildly different animal yeah. when it's from a professional standpoint. And I've genuinely found it's better to not post than post, not crap, but post not work that's not as good or not as interesting. So do yeah. you have two accounts? Sorry? Do you have two accounts? What, like a personal account and a... Professional. Yeah, I've got a professional account. I've literally just got a new phone and I'm going to be setting up a personal account for myself, like, which I'll show you, like, my finished projects and, like, it'll have my my gym stuff and it'll have, like, all the stuff that I do with, like, when, when I go out with family and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, so I am going to do that, but that's that's more for me, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Like, I think people, so many people are like, oh, I'm going to paint on commission. And, and you know what? I, I never say, like, don't do it. But mm. then you, you just don't realize how much damage it can do. 100%. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Aaron, go on. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, you have to go into it with your eyes open, knowing oh, yeah. mm. what you're getting yourself in for. Yeah. Mm. It's true. It's it funny, is. right? Yeah. Um, so, go on, Chris. I was going to say, it's, it's funny. You asked what makes us happy and... We've gone into the... What makes us miserable? What media. makes us miserable? <laughs> it's, it, it's how our mind works, isn't it? But I tell you what, so let, me, let like... me put a spin on this, right? Chris, I want you to carry on with that. What makes me happy is we have four or five events every year that we all get together, right? And those are the painting competitions. I don't care about the competitions, but we all get together. And every fucking weekend that we get together is amazing, right? That is what brings me joy. There's never a weekend where I come away and go, I hated that weekend. Mm. Even the worst ones, right? Even even the worst ones. Yes, when Aaron won a G, when, when Aaron won a Golden Demon, that was my worst event that I got, <laughs> right? <laughs> but genuinely, like I love them. That's truly what makes me happy. Mm. Mm. But I didn't ask what makes you happy. I asked what gave you joy. Yeah, yeah, that is, that, that is the best way of doing it. Because happy, happiness is fleeting, it's fleeting, isn't it? Mm. But joy is the uh, even though this, this is hard, I love it. Even though this yeah. is really tricky and I'm struggling with this, I love it. So mm. even though it's hard for you, Liam, like you said, like it's hard kind of fighting with the, do I post this even though it's not as good as my previous work? Something mm. draws you back. So I'm interested in what that something is. What for is me, yeah. like I, so I, I suppose the, the fundamental reason why that I keep doing this for me is because I want to be better. I am, I'm the same in error as, as Aaron in this regards. I want to be better. Not only do I want to be better, my, my mindset automatically wants me to be the best. Right? And I know full well that will never happen because it's too subjective in what we do. But that is what feeds everything. And when I'm at that point where I'm truly painting and I'm trying to be better, that is when, that is when I'm, I'm that, that's, that is what brings me joy, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I find when I'm, enjoying the hobby more regardless of whether it's competitive or just um army stuff my general mood for the non-hobby stuff is a lot better because a lot of our mood is tied to it if we're having a shit day at work we tend to mm -hmm. either want to get an escape from the hobby or yeah. we just don't feel like it because we're feeling shit from the other thing um yeah. so when i'm learning that you know when there are highs you have to enjoy them and not feel uh any doubt or imposter syndrome about uh, when you do have them um be comfortable knowing that okay maybe next week it might not be so good but we mm. can definitely get back to that same same spot so like my my specific joy is very situational in that when i've painted something and i, I know probably everyone does this you put it down you come back 10 minutes later you have a look at it you put it down you come back 10 minutes later you put it down and every, every time I do that, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. And I wake up the next day and go, yeah, this is pretty good. Then 
then I feel elated like that it brings me a lot of joy. And that's not yeah. just about the validation of putting it on the internet and worrying about all that. It's just, do I like it fundamentally? Do I like what I've done, regardless of what everyone else thinks, whether it's a judge or someone mm. on Instagram? Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to focus on on that. And if that means sticking to what I enjoy doing more, you know, be it the model or the way of painting, then that's fine. Um, yeah. Like I'm speaking as a non-professional, of course, like I've got no sort of uh, requirements. I have to get to a certain standard or meet a certain goals and stuff. So for me, keeping it as an actual hobby and enjoying it has um, been up and down over the last few years. But I think I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to find my spot and get more joy out of the hobby yeah. more consistently, at least. Yeah. Awesome. That was a very long way of saying Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Like in Age of Sigma. <laughs> and that was a very, very eloquent way of saying Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, I love hobbits. In Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone enjoys that. That's nothing new. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Aaron is not getting away with this one. Mm. Aaron, Aaron my, what my, brings you joy? Mine my, might my, my not be reasonably succinct. If you fucking say magenta and black, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like it, in some in some regards, it's very similar to Chris. Like I'm, as much as I enjoy the process, because if you didn't enjoy the process, as I said, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I always have been, always will be. I'm, I'm results, result driven, everything. Yeah. So for me, it's the whole being able to, similar to what Chris was saying. You finish something, you put it down, and go. I like that and just enjoying that and being happy that you are, you do like your own work and that you are comfortable with it. Um, took a hot minute to get to that point. Yeah. That's the, that's the hard part, but that's the bit that now gives me the, the, the joy part of it beforehand. It was knowing that one day we'll get there and now we're there. It's being there. It never gets old. Mm. Um, like there'll be similar to actually similar to Chris. There was, there was a moment the other morning where I left my glasses on my desk and I came in to get, literally to just just to get my glasses. And there was Horace still on the desk because I forgot to put him in his little his little tomb between uh, <laughs> painting sessions. <laughs> and I just picked it up and it was just like, yeah, I like that. It's going well. Yes, and then put him in his tomb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's, just, it's the result. I, I've got no issue admitting it. I... I I like being able to paint something that I and that I look at and go, I'm happy I have that. I'm glad that's mine. Mm. Um, yeah. And and being able to paint everything pink. Um, <laughs> that definitely helps. Excellent. It's, uh... also, I'd, I'd like to point out as well, because it, <laughs> it's been mentioned in chat, but obviously Josh can't see the chat window. This is the first time in the original version of this and the new version of this, where it's just like, hang on a minute, who's 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 the host? <laughs> who's, who's the host? <laughs> so Josh has switched it around with interrogator. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like asking questions, man. It's great, I can listen. Well, we're, what we're not telling everyone is, is jo Josh is permanently joining us, by the way. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I will be rebranding the channel tomorrow, don't worry. Oh, um, <laughs> can I get a like Aaron's? That is an awesome <laughs> logo. Oh, the, yeah, I'm still waiting for mine. Yeah. Oh, I need to get one. I've got this. Uh, Wait, terrible... Chris, Chris, have you ordered one? No, no. I thought you'd just get me one eventually, but yeah, no, you haven't. Right. So. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, you, you whoa, whoa. Stuff. <laughs> I don't get anything for free. What the hell are you on about? <laughs> I've only got a ginger wig. I don't have a fancy light. <laughs> <laughs> just put, just put some fairy lights on it. <laughs> <laughs> Slap some fairy lights on it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, well it's, it's it's a, it's a good thing. I, you know, it's because like the motivations is a good part, and uh, something Brennan has said to me is the why, what what why, and that can encourage you if you remember. So all of us have different reasons for wanting to to do this hobby. I was very much I need to win, but I got so depressed when I wasn't. So my Alpha Legion, I've actually restarted four times. Really? The the first well. time. I painted it. I was like, okay, this is this is rubbish. Stripped. So I put everything in Dell. Stripped everything. Started again. 
Then I did that. I was like, oh, this is better, but I didn't like it. So sold it off. And then I started again. I was like, oh, this is really good. Went to another painting competition, didn't win anything. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> strip. Uh, but no, actually, my wife said, don't you dare. Don't you dare strip it. You're not spending that time again. Put it in the cabinet. Sleep on it. I'm like, okay, actually, I'm glad I've kept it. But my last one is like, okay, I'm going to take time. So as a result, it takes me ages now to paint my army, my personal army. Like, it's a mm-hmm. sickness because I need it to be, I don't want to strip it again. So I'm in the mindset of it. It needs to be perfect. And that need for perfection, I think, for army painting is a killer because yeah. you can't paint everything to that fidelity. So mi- single minis, in the end, that's what I've kind of started to do. I've had to make peace with, okay, regardless of if this is going to win anything, let me just paint it for the for the army paint let me just paint it get it out and make it ha- i'm happy enough with it that's my motivation and so the alpha legion was like oh no one really knows anything about them they're a mystery blah blah i'm gonna make my own stuff i'm gonna get so into it i started doing uh started asking for commissions from artists to like paint characters i made a character asked them to paint the character in a in a, a portrait um and i was like oh this is great oh people are enjoying this content blah 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 but then when I went to single mini- miniatures, I had to get out of that mindset of, oh, no, it has to be really good. That's why I had to start before this show, Aaron. I asked you, like, how long do you spend and how do you deal with spending on just one model? As a commission painter, you guys, how do how do you do that? How do you get over that, that, that hump of, I can only spend this time on one model? But then I've also got other needs and stuff that has to happen around two. So I mean, stuff- it- Self. Liam but, is probably yeah. the best one to answer this. So, so I, I spent a lot of time. So I, I spent six years army painting commissions, right? And I, I, I did really well out of it. It's, it, I'm, I'm not the best example because I found it incredibly easy because I can be very business orientated when it comes to this stuff. So mm. I was like, this is the quote. This is the result you will get. Yep. And I'm like, I hit that result done move on i found it so incredibly simple and i knew because the way that i set myself up i knew that if i finished a work a piece of work 20 hours early that's fine right that's that the the client isn't going to get a discount because i finished it early right because if i'm good enough to finish early and they still get what they're paying for that's fine Mm. but there are other times when i know that work's going to go over because there's something that's come up that's unforeseen and that's when I start losing money. But at the end of the day, I was it was it was so simple for me because I'm like, right, these are my working hours. Mm. This is what you're getting. This mm. is the price you will get. It. Yeah. And sometimes, like this is the side that people don't realize. Sometimes I would have nights where I'm up till five, six o'clock in the morning to hit a deadline. Yeah. That didn't bother me, but I still had to do it. Yeah. But at the same time, there's like I've said this, I've said this publicly so many times. Like if you set it up properly, there's a lot of money to be made in commission painting. Do you know what I mean? Like I know people who are earning four or five thousand pounds a month painting armies, right? So, and we've talked about this before, but you've you've got to. And it's funny because one of my students signed up for tuition, and he has not had any tuition yet because the tuition that we've been doing has actually been based around he started a commission painting service, and he's got problems with communication on clients. He's got clients that are not happy, um, and it's all little little things that you learn the hard way because no one no one. No one tells you how to do things. Like his perfect example was they they sent out quick whip pictures on their camera phone of this army that they're painting. And I'm like, well, the client's not happy because you're sending them crap pictures. It doesn't matter how well you paint. Yeah. You send them crap pictures, the client's not going to be happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's little things like this. <clears throat> you've it's It has to be a business. Like you've got to be able to go, this is separate. Do you know what I mean? Like this is not my hobby. Here's a contract. Here's my deadlines. Here's the money yeah and you work to it you have to separate yourself because if you become too emotionally invested in it as well you're going to end up losing out Mm. really good really good answer so mindset i think a lot of artists struggle with the business side don't they yeah the the way of they're very good like oh just do this sure i'll do it for i'll do it for free oh i'll I'll take it i love it so much but then it's uh, actually like oh this is a your livelihood actually sorry yeah the problem is as well, people do it for the love, right? And the problem is that love disappears quickly. Yeah. 
right when and i when i got into it properly sorry Aaron, i'll shut up in a minute when i got into yeah. it properly it was the height of the horus heresy right mm. my last year of commission painting i painted over 700 space marines cool. right so i hate space wonder. marines now right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i went from mate i love horus heresy to i'm never painting another white right. scar but, <laughs> but could we get you right would you rather paint a white scar or a necron mm. Oh mate, do you know what? I just found a <laughs> I've got like I've got the start of a Necron right here, and it's no, not it's terrible, terrible, right? Wait, but wait, is just... that is that the Necron from the corner of Doom, or is that a no, new one? no, no, don't, that that died a long time ago. <laughs> no. I literally yeah, so... have a corner of Doom where models go to die. Yeah, oh. so for, for for Josh's benefit, you yeah. know when you know when Liam was saying about he, he chucks minis. Yeah. Oh. There was a time. Oh mate, well, we're not starting this. I don't yeah, spray yeah. them. So. <laughs> There was there was a Twitch stream where he was painting this Necron, <laughs> and it got to a point where he literally just went, "I hate this," and then just yeeted it if off from camera. It was just <laughs> gone, and you heard it hit the wall and shatter, <laughs> and everyone was just like, "Uh." <laughs> I told you, I, I get quite emotional. <laughs> oh man, yeah, like, I wasn't exaggerating. It's 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 fixable, wow. right? It's it's still good. It was like, no, 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 that was. <laughs> <laughs> It was in bits. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's Actually, on this topic, the other one that's always a standout for me, and he will absolutely maintain that this did not happen, but I have witnesses. He's full of crap. It definitely happened. What? At a course, painting a 3D printed bust that was a sort of like early production run of an unreleased piece. And a friend goes, oh, yeah, let's, let's have a look and see what see what you've been working on. Like, just to compare and see what everyone's doing. Mate, no, don't even go <laughs> there. <laughs> That, that, I'll mute you. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I kid you not, everyone else is like proper kid gloves. Like, there you go. And then there's Liam, who literally just goes, all right, <laughs> just, just launches it at the guy. I did not launch like... it. He's so <laughs> exaggerated. I didn't launch it. <laughs> did it's something <laughs> It was in the air for like half a second, right? Because <laughs> yeah, you threw it really fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> you not exaggerate. It was not that bad. It was not that bad. It was just like it was. It was just a little throw. <laughs> <laughs> like, a little throw. <laughs> yes. it's a little throw. It's just the model, man. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't. I didn't chuck it. It was in the air for a little bit. It's fine. I only, I only threw it very gently. I see what. Like <laughs> if, if we're gonna go down this route, like the only time. So I did. You know my Stormcast Eternals, the three of them. When I took that on the non-metal metallic course, I did throw it across the table, oh, and no. I've honestly never seen anyone shit themselves like the bloke who had to catch it. <laughs> oh, and he was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, one. "It's just a model, mate. If it breaks, it breaks. It's not a problem." The sheer panic. At that table oh. was ridiculous. I was so laughing my head the, off. Just the thought of that just fills me with dread. <laughs> oh. I, will, I will admit, I will admit. So this is also again for Josh's benefit. This was so the guy that Liam threw the, the bus at, same guy, right? Same guy. <laughs> yeah. And we're at, we're at Fen Model Show, and he's like, "Can I can I come see the demon?" I was like, "Yeah, like just go, just go pick it up. It's fine." He's like, "I can't pick it up. What are you on about? I can't touch it." I was like, "It's, it's fine. Just pick it up. I trust you." <laughs> and he wouldn't do it, so I picked it up, and then I went to give it to him. But then, sort of, you know, you do the fake drop thing. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he and like the other guys know him. He genuinely looked like he was about to cry. I was yeah. like, I feel a little bit bad about that one. <laughs> Only a little bit though. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was like, I'm that was not okay. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, just crying, just break sound. Just look at Love it. Um, like, Sanashi worshipper, man. That's why. You just got yeah. joy from seeing him panic <laughs> scream. All the way. So funny. <sighs> oh mate. Way. So what events are you going to? Like slightly off topic. What events are you at next uh, next year? This year? What? This where year. are you going? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, so I wanted to go to um, Monty. I wanted yeah. to go to Monty last year, but my sister in law had her um, graduation. Damn it! So this year, I'm hoping to try and go to that because I've heard it's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I want to go to SMC if I can as well. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that some some of the dates are corresponding with just other events. And that's I can't make them. SMC, not SMC. So um, FMS is my yeah. anniversary. So 
Oh, no one's going to that at the moment. We're oh, going to be on our. I'm going to be on my Larry. Oh, it's oh. harsh. Right. I really want to go because um, Martin was like, "Oh, do you want to do a do you want to do a um a demo?" And I was like, "Oh yeah," but then nice. Like it's my two year anniversary, and uh, Chris will know that when they get passionate and they're mad, man, that's 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 the yeah, answer. So, 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 <laughs> so, so I'm just gonna like avoid that. I think yeah, I've been thinking about yeah. it. But, um, I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to go the week after. So maybe I'll be able to come come to that. Um, we'll see. Um, but what else is there? So is Salute Tom? Is that every year? Yeah. yeah. So Salute. Not all of you sound disappointed. All of you sound disappointed. I was aiming. I didn't say nothing. It was it, Liam was the one that was groaning. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so, you got, so you got MPO as well. MPO. Yeah. Uh, May. Got, okay. MPO May is in May 17th. I yeah, and then you got South Wales. So you got DiddyCon basically, South Wales Miniature yeah. Open in December, December by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, I think those are the only other two that I can think of that are worthwhile off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, well, d- domestic, well, yes, but if we're talking further afield, you've got Contrast in Poland. Oh, yeah, sorry. Like, that one's like, I, I can't make it to that, which is we a shame. I'm going to SMC, that I can't one. do Contrast. We uh, do, yeah, and it looks amazing. Obviously, oh. you've got um, Adepticon where you've got Golden Demon question mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got but there's a few other ones over there as well. To be fair, um, Resin Beast is was actually pretty. It was good last year, Resin and there's Demon. more. What's yeah, so it's um uh, it's an event Creature run Caster, between Creature Caster and Parabellum, uh, but there are. I can't. If you, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head, but there are other companies involved now. So yeah. as long as it's something from their catalogs, it's kind of fair game. Um, but that event, that competition last time was really well run. Um, okay. so hopefully that will grow and become a bit more than it currently is, because frankly it deserves it. Um, and there's a few other little ones over there as well. Like as Adapticon has quite a few smaller competitions all in one roof. Um, Nova Ooh. has a competition that seems to be getting better. Yeah, it's basically getting year. much better, actually. Um, there has been rumor of another one, an open format. Oh. That at some point in the not too distant future, oh. hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Was that in the uh, States? Yeah, States. I'd tease. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other European ones. Uh, so, saying that, there's. There's Bane? there's a oh, I've just I've just remembered shameless shameless Prequels. plug. There's a black dragon painting competition as well in May, which is quite new. Um, like it's, it's, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So so a plug mm. on that one. Like I I don't know a lot about it. Um, the reason why it's a plug is because I've been asked to judge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's in Norwich, so like you guys check that out. It might be good. It might not. I don't know enough about it yet. But it is being helped out by some friends of the community. So. Yeah, you know what it's like. we should be supporting it. Check it out, Black Dragon Painting Competition. Because I saw, um, I'm sure I saw Goldfinch post about it. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, I should break my pen. Yep. There. Awesome. Okay, so there's quite a few. There's a lot I didn't know about actually. And actually going to FMS was like, oh, there's all these different models. Um, I had no idea. Like being in the GD world, I was like, oh, okay, just Warhammer. That's all there is. Blah blah blah. And then you open your mind, and it's like. What was it? What what do you call those? Um, they're like canvases. Are they called flats or something? Flats, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh the flats God. of Fen were beautiful, weren't they? I couldn't believe it. I was yeah, like, they're amazing. Wow, that is excellent. And it actually, um, it'd be very interesting to see you approach flats as well. What with it being that weird bridge between the almost sort of classical, like two D mm-hmm. oil canvas and mm-hmm. obviously miniature. Mm-hmm. So it could actually be. Could be pretty good. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I need to learn how to draw. I, if there's one thing I need to work on, it's freehand because I can't draw. And uh, yeah, like learning how to actually paint. So the Bretonians are really exciting because they've got all of this space to do freehand. So yeah, we're gonna have a Bretonian off, Josh. Yeah, come, come at me, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna die. Go get a bottle, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, like freehand is definitely something I'd like to learn. And on that topic, actually, being where you guys are, is there anything that you think for this year you want to pick up or get better at? 
Oh, that's a good question. Ooh. I my mean, my... F- <laughs> <laughs> Your relationship? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah. You can I mean, she does. Well, she though. deserves better, to be fair. <laughs> I haven't seen it for three weeks. I forgot what she looks like. That's because she's been around mine, mate. <laughs> we talked to this camera with a ginger wig for three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, your version of, was it Wilson from Castaway? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Right, go on. Who's going first? Chris? I've got the question already. What do you want to get better at? All right. What's your focus this year? What do you want to get better at other than finishing models? Uh, obvious one, I want to get into bus. Mm. I say getting into bus. I've done a couple, but I want to get properly back into it, mm. them, hopefully them, because it means I've done more than one. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I want to focus on that outside of, you know, army stuff. Cool. Cool. Me next? Do you want to go, Aaron? I don't mind. I was just, I was just waiting to see if you were going to jump in. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can jump in. So my, I want to continue with my progression of freehand, right? So I'm really happy with the freehand work that I did last year. I want to, I really want to try and up that this year. Um, and I want to try and do some more unique pieces. I don't just want to be like, oh, here's another Space Marine or here's another Stormcast or, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want to do some more unique pieces, like either unique or have a unique spin on them. That's my big goal. Yeah, nice. So nice and simple for me. Yeah. Uh, so I've, well, I've got two. One is a little bit more realistic than the others. Um, well, than the other, um, I've promised myself because similar to what you were talking about earlier, Josh, with the the whole army painting thing Mm. and being able to just go, look, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough. Mm. Um, I've kind of, I've promised myself that this year I will play a game of heresy. I want to finish my sons of Horus at some point if i if it takes me all year and i play a game in december that's fine but i want to play a game of heresy i spent i spent yesterday not yesterday evening wednesday evening uh, airbrushing two leviathan dreads at the same time so we're oh, nice. product holy shit he was batch painting i it's know well i know this week i've painted five space marines and half of two leviathans because i've got to do the bits that aren't airbrushed now um, <laughs> But the other one that's a little bit less realistic, but it's the truth. I want me another demon, yeah. and I'm going to keep chasing that until I, I. I just want. I just want to be able to say it's not a fluke. That's fair. Oh. I think. I think the only person who is saying that is a fluke is you. To be honest yeah. with you. Oh yeah. So no, 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 absolutely no one has said that. And if they did, it'd be a case of off your pop. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's purely just for me. I want to know mm. it's not a fluke. Yeah, I get that. So to be fair, though, like, and I mean, I've said this to you before, I don't think you should have won in the UK because you should have won first in the States. I think you were robbed in the States. I'll go out on the internet and say that. But regardless, you won a demon, so good for you, man. Mm. So, Josh, just to spin this back to you, (laughs) if you do make it to Monty, do you have any particular ambition in terms of what you'd be happy to walk away with? Oh, so Monty is open format, isn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, bronze for me would be just amazing. Um, just to say, like, because <clears throat> I know how hard it is. And I think it was, I can't remember who said it to me at Fen, but I mean, maybe it was Martin. He said that, oh, and it was you, Liam, actually. He said it's very humbling. You'll go and it's incredibly humbling because uh, you'll, you'll just see, you think you have something really good and then it will just get bopped. Yeah. And so getting a bronze. And this is the interesting thing about like Golden Demon or um, first, first, second, third place categories and then open where multiple people can get that. Some people feel like it waters it down. It waters mm-hmm. down like, oh, everyone's achieved it. But I think it's very healthy and good to say, actually, this is really good and you do fit into that category. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very different type of competition. Yeah. So getting a bronze at Monty would be um, in- incredible. It would just be, yeah, it would feel like a gold for me until I've met and I'm like, okay, now I want a gold. Now I can, I've proven. So similar to you, said Aaron, it's like, oh, I've proven I can get there. I don't know if you guys ever played StarCraft or anything like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like yeah. you know when you were like in Bronze League for ages yeah. and then you come out and you're like, oh, I'm in silver, oh, I'm in gold. And like, I think I mean, rather than for me trying to jump straight ahead mm-hmm. into those... 
um, into that. It was like, okay, let me work up bit by bit and get there. And I've always, I think I've always been a bit more of a cautious person. I'm de- interesting. I'm very impulsive, but like I'm a bit more cautious. I try to be like, okay, let me make sure I'm good at that thing before I say go further. I try and teach it with oils. It's like I need to be really good at oil painting as much as I can so that I'm qualified myself to teach it. And with that, it was like, I, I liked how in um, Andy's MPO, and in Henry's MPO's thing, uh, competition, they had the standard and masters. And I think yeah. Monty's the same, is it? Is it standard yeah. and masters? So yeah, yeah a bronze in standards against, against all those people would be mad. It would be mad. It would be great. Uh, masters being incredibly high. Uh, got the masculines. And it's just, oh. I'm terrified of Masters at SMC. Yeah. So scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking yeah. scared. Daunting. It's daunting. I'm fucking terrifying. I'm um, terrified, genuinely. But I think it's fun, right? Like I'm I'm very competitive. I played yeah. a lot of fighting games. Um I played Street Fighter, I played Smash Bros. I traveled all over the UK, left the country, went to Amsterdam for Smash Brothers. So just to go to tournaments and play, but I get so lost. And I think probably that's why I can't really handle doing two things at once uh, when it comes to like having an interest. If it's I'm either into Warhammer or then I'm into fighting games or then I'm into, I don't know, paintball and never got into Airsoft, but paintball or something like that. And then you go back to Warhammer and it's just like 100%. And I think that kind of drive to, like you said, to be really good at something but for me, I've never really been the best at anything. Um, I've I've kind of just got to a point and then blop, dropped off and left to do something else. So Warhammer is the first time, I think, where I said, okay, I really want to get good at this thing and focus at this thing. Um, and I, I guess, yeah, I guess it's that kind of like warmness in character that I, I, I have, and it's weird saying that, but that lets people... People feel ha- kind. So, for example, the Warhammer uh, thing, the, re- the reason I got on that is because Henry and Andy recommended me when they were asking people for the heresy thing. They said, who's a good person for Alpha Legion? And they said, Josh. And I'm not the best painter. No way. I've never, like I said, I've never won a demon. I've never won a competition. But I love Alpha, I loved Alpha Legion so much. That was anything. I remember when they showed off the Praetor at the Heresy Weekender. I was like, ah! Screamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. screamed and went crazy about it and I think that enthusiasm has allowed me to get where I am and even though I'm not the best I'll push and that encouragement so when other people are doing the same thing and they're struggling it's been helpful it's been good for me to try and help where I can and get help because I've known what it feels like to fail and I know what it feels like to have no one believe in you quote unquote and having that one person who does and will support you in that um, how'd I get here? I mean, what did you even ask me? <laughs> I'm, loving I'm loving this tangent. <laughs> Where am I? Um, it's a great point, though. Yeah, God, I don't know. Got the Enthusiasm is infectious, so if you surround yourself yeah. with like-minded people, or even if there's just one person in your group and you help them mm. come to, you know, your your side of it, yeah, it's a it's a good good way to to motivate others and yourself at the same time. So in, I'll tell you something, and I know we're on, on, we're on um, live stream, so a lot of people who I don't know, but I'll just be open. I lost, um, so before COVID, I lost a family member and he, uh, to suicide, and he was very isolated. He isolated himself loads. So in COVID, I said, with so many guys in mental health and so many guys on their own and painting being such a lonesome thing, I said, okay, what what can we do as a community to like get people together and look after themselves and so i built this um thing called the i think it's like the painting lodge and we had people from all over the world join that's how i met brennan and dawn zara chris um jose as well i met all these different people and to come together and paint together and just hang out just to look after their mental health during that and you learn a lot just through talking with different guys and, and, and girls about just what kind of goes like we're doing now what kind of goes through your mind whilst you're you're painting and all the things um, and it's just been a wildly, like, amazing and eye-opening. So Jose sat with me and um, was like, this is Boris Vallejo. I was like, what? what this mm-hmm. guy is talking about the Terminator and he's always pecks out. And you're like, why? And he just sat with me, like, free of charge. Didn't, didn't charge me anything. He said, let me just teach you all of this 
theory about value and lie. It was like, oh. and I think actually that was the turning point where I was like, I want to get good at painting because there was all this stuff in this world that I was that I was like didn't know about and was opened up to in that moment. So when I go to painting competitions, whether I walk away with something, I'm come away so inspired. So uh, Jamie from a uh, man paint, painting minis. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my gosh, dude's a legend. He's my probably like my favorite artist at the moment. I mean, he painted like fruit. Was it two pin? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> two right. pin, and so much so that I asked a friend, I commissioned a friend to uh, make some for me so I can do a class here because I think actually warhammer might be a bit tricky to get new people into painting but if you say we're doing a live class on painting almost still life but 3d suddenly yeah. heads go oh that's a that's a, i'll try that that's a nice idea mm. and um so seeing that and coming away really inspired it was just a big deal so that's why I, I, I love competitions whether i win or not it's just the experience but yeah definitely hurts when you walk away with nothing and that's another driver to yeah push deep but I've learned to be at peace with the just experience because one day you can't bring any of this with you when you pass away. <laughs> You're not like, yeah, a, yeah. A, 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 you know, you can't bring any of it with you. So it's the experiences that I really kind of look for now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. It's great that you were able to turn it into a positive thing. And it, it, going back to what I was saying earlier, like mental health is very linked to your hobby. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what's triggered it or sent you downwards. Um, so yeah, I think me, Erin and Liam can all attest we've got a similar thing with the Twitch community in this sort mm. of very niche part of Twitch and mini painting. Yeah. Um, has been so helpful for us then and you know, pushing the scene for like open comps or just conventions in general in the UK has also helped because you see a lot of the same people on a sort of tour if you manage to go to a few of these. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even just, you know, a day or two with them is a lot more, you take a lot more out of that than, you know, a few messages online over a series of months and months. Yeah. Um, so it's like yeah. a real, yeah, it's um, kind of chucking yourself in the deep end to begin with and opening up and getting to know lots of people. But once you do, you find a good group. It's, uh, yeah, it's massively helpful. Massively. It's just motivating. And I guess, like, you guys who compete, having each other to softly compete with, like even if even if it's banter like oh yeah you know you get in a gd or um you come in first and like you have that kind of moment it's almost like um brendan described it to me like uh b-boys where mm -hmm. you having that rap battle you you do your dance and then they do their dance and then you come in and then it's like the same with miniatures it's like you release something that's sick your friend releases something that's sick and you push that at each other that yeah. rivalry, healthy brotherly rivalry um i think is really good and actually when you find someone to do that with it's like having a gym buddy. If you go to gym, having someone to do that yeah, with and yeah. help push you. Oh, what a motivation! Um, so I do think like it's a. I hope at least go back to Warhammer. I hope GW do more, and they actually realise the uh, just not even the 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 gaming competitions, which are great, but the community they really have, and that's yeah. why they really can't. I don't think they can afford to drop the paint community because it's not just the painting, it's the all of the stuff around it yeah like that is very unique very i don't know any other miniature company that has that influence over a community to draw them across oceans to hang out for a weekend it's golden demon yeah. a weekend yeah wild, I mean, yeah. wild. so i do yeah. hope they continue with it so. no i i i, I, I 100 agree couldn't yeah i couldn't put it better like i i it's yeah. The, the the whole community around all of this was genuinely eye opening. So and coming the thing back, is, sorry, Aaron, carry on. I was just say coming coming back during COVID, it literally like you don't get to see anyone, you don't talk to anyone, mm. you don't go anywhere, mm. just sat in a room painting. And then of mm. course you find out Twitch is a thing, and that it was genuinely like eye opening slash shocking to be like. Because obviously I had like a 15 year break, came back and I was like, this is wild. This is nowhere near where it used to be. Like it's an order of magnitude bigger and there are so many more people involved. Um, and for the most part, everyone's been really, really supportive and welcoming about it. Which again, from what I remember is it's not how I remembered it. Um, okay. It's been 
it's been really nice to come back and see it in a much healthier place and without getting uh, too uh, spicy about it i <laughs> sincerely hope that certain individuals at games workshop are aware of that because it does occasionally feel like they're not yeah i think so this is literally what i was going to say like you you've hit the nail on the head like they need to understand it doesn't matter what your opinion of golden demon is as a competition people need to understand the impact that golden demon as an event has mm. on the community and not just in the uk all over yep. it is the reason it, there is a reason why it's the biggest competition games workshop has so much clout and reach it's too important not to have right whether you like it or not whether you like games workshop pieces or not like whether you like the format of the competition it is too important and it's too central an event, um, especially for the UK. Yeah. Right. At least in Europe, you've got SMC, you've got Monty, at least in the States, you've got Adepticon, which granted is now GD, but like it's, it's it would do too much damage not to have it. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, as, as great as it is that we've got the smaller events coming up, you know, the grassroots kind of picking up the slack. Yeah. Um, I mean, not again, without being too uh, spicy about it, the fact that the grass, the grassroots people are the ones having to pick up the slack kind of speaks volumes. Yeah. Hey, I, I don't give a fuck about being spicy, right? They need to sort Golden Demon out. Oh, they do. Right, I don't give a shit. The, the thing is, right, and I'm, I'm going to say this, like, the staff and the team at, G, uh, at Games Workshop are amazing, right? And they care about this stuff, right? Simple as that. They fucking do. My words are not a reflection on them in the slightest, but... The simple fact is there are people here in, in, I'm assuming, marketing that need to understand the impact that this has on people and the importance of it. And they need to pull the fucking finger out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that is genuinely not not a reflection on any of the studio staff oh, or no. anything because they fucking love yeah. Golden Demon and they love Warhammer Fest and all that sort of stuff. You just don't fucking give up on it. Simple as that. Oh, it's very strange. I, I thought the last one in the UK was very good. It's the first one actually I've ever been to, so it's difficult to compare it to anything else. But it was the... I heard, at least from people who had been, like yourself, it was good, the way they, they showed good. things. So, GD was great. So, uh, yeah, I'm, just, uh, I'm very surprised to hear that it might not be happening. So, or, really... so Warhammer Fest wasn't a success. That's where the issue arose uh, from see. the last gd without getting too much into it because obviously that's not what we're supposed to be going over i was supposed to be talking no. about you tonight um but warhammer fest was the problem there was mm. a lot of negative feedback and as far as the rumors are there and this is only a rumor they didn't earn a profit they didn't make a huge amount of profit on it at the very least so that's it oh, okay but yeah so we need a fucking gd like but coming coming full circle you started um, this podcast talking about, you know, feeling comfortable in a hobby. Mm. And for a lot of people, Warhammer Fest or just Golden Demon itself is that. It's the first foray into this kind of competition scene or mm. convention scene. Yeah. Um, so it's important that we have it, not just for the competitive side and pushing people, but like just to have that sort of excuse to go away for the weekend and see all, the, all your friends or meet new people and see all these cool painted models. So, yeah. yeah. You know, the likes of yourself and other, you know, influencers on Insta are mm. very important in that because you're kind of pushing that positivity that's still there in the hobby. Um, and Games Workshop will see that and they need to see that and take that, you know, into consideration. Like people yeah. want yeah. a GD, people want a Warhammer Fest. But regardless yeah. of, you know, how good or bad the previous one is, people would much rather have it than not have it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it, I, I was just gonna say i think it's just uh just a case of i a little bit more understanding it, it's people mm. are very very quick to get the pitchforks out and start trying to burn everything down and get super negative and i hate i hate them down with the company it's like mate stop it like there's no yeah. like they're people they make mistakes it happens but i think people need to especially on certain topics need to Take a step back just a little bit. Yeah. Because otherwise they ain't going to listen. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And the this thing is, is, as well, like we know some of these staff, right? Yeah. This is the other thing. Like all of us 
no members of staff, whether that's yeah. through Twitch, whether that's through meeting them, whether that's because we've known them before they work there, right? All of these people love working there, right? They don't go to work and go, oh, it's just a paycheck, right? It's like, and, and everyone sees all of the shit that goes online. Definitely isn't the paycheck. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well done. That was brilliant. Yeah, it's that not was, it's oh, not well done. <laughs> Bravo. <It's... laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's, you're right. It's passion. And I think, I don't know. I think, I think we're very blessed and fortunate to have an event like it or yeah. had it for so long. Um, it's very good that so many people are trying to start their own as well to inspire people. There's something nostalgic about something that's been around for a long time. Um, but again, I, I guess it's not really the people that we see and that we have access to are not the ones, unfortunately, making the decisions. Yeah, yeah which is a frustrating it. thing. And GW is a, I mean, working in a games company, it's a games, it's a games company at the end of the day. I think that's how you would pull it down to miniature games studio they make miniatures but it's predominantly for their games hence why they push the competition so much because that seems yeah. to be what drives a lot of the the, the income and that's a assumption but um yeah. just I, through I, the I, amount of like for 40k the amount of um updates and patches and faqs and like people paying with pretty much gray armies and like it's crazy um but that i think is where they make their money um and i just think yeah I think it will have a big knock-on effect if it if it's cut. And for me, like again, I don't get to go to a lot of competitions. Um, so like I've got a new family now, trying to support that. Uh, I can't. I have to be very picky about what I choose to go to. So Monty's good because my wife is Italian. We can go. She can speak Italian and can help me translate through the way to be there. And it's nice, right? It's a nice holiday place. Apparently, it's all the pictures. Gorgeous place. Oh, beautiful. Um, so that's a nice holiday for both of us. Uh, but GD in in Manchester. Oh my gosh, I had to I had to really fight to go to that. So if they're saying like they're, they're going <laughs> to cut, it's, it's it's rough. But for so many people like yourselves, oh my gosh, it's such a nice way to express yourself to the mm. best you can possibly be, to push really hard and to have something to go towards. And I think it if you if that's taken away, it kind of stumps your your growth. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think it was negative. I'd be in, I don't think ultimately I don't think they'll cut it. Um, I just think they'll probably just have to change how they they approach it. Um, I, I I think I, we've talked about this. I think we'll have it second half of the year, probably yeah. October at Warhammer World. Warhammer World. Warhammer yeah. World. Okay. I, I I don't I don't for a second think that it's a case of people actively trying to cut anything. Or yeah. that they don't believe in it, or that they they're like, oh well, it doesn't make us money, and therefore we don't want to do it. I don't believe that for a second. There's too many passionate yeah. people that work there that would just shoot that down in burning flames, including yeah. among management. Yeah, um, I think it's more a case of it's as you kind of touched on, like their their priority at the moment is focusing on the business, and they're a business, so that's fine. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. never going to judge them for that. Um, but at the same time as, as that, I do think it's, I don't think it's unreasonable for them to also remember that they have a community around this business and when the communication isn't as good as it could be, all they have to do is acknowledge that and just go, Hey guys are bad. Like, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. Or, you know, golden Dean will be later in the year because we're, we're reevaluating or however they want to phrase it, et cetera, et cetera. Like just yeah. talk to people. If people get spoken to, everyone's kind of kind of happy. It's like that's fine. Yeah, I know what's happening now. Um, yeah. it's the silence. Silence is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect example, right? There's loads of talk about categories in the in the chat, and I'm not going to go over the categories. But the perfect Again. example is the Adepticon categories, right? If they had released all of those categories, and then even the next couple of days gone, here are the rules. Yeah, wouldn't have had any issues, any problems. Perfect example. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. we're what three or four months on nobody knows the rules <laughs> yeah it's, no, was so perfect example yeah i mean I, I i do feel for them to a degree now this doesn't excuse it mm -hmm. doesn't excuse it in any way shape or form like 
to put it very bluntly, they've really dropped the ball on this, like big style. Um, and frankly, it won't be forgotten, I don't think, for a little while. Um, but I do in some ways feel for feel for some, not all, some uh, people involved because it is trying to it's trying to walk that line, right? Like Maisie said, they're a, they're a public entity. They yeah. they can't they have to be very careful with what they do and what they say, which I fully appreciate. Yeah. But then you end up with silence. And silence is never good. <laughs> yeah, you made such a good point earlier when you turned around and said you can't let the public like dictate the narrative. Exactly. I was like, mm. I never even thought of that. And it's the fucking second, bang on. Do you know what I mean? Second, yeah, the sec as a publicly facing company, the second you lose control of a narrative and allow the public to dictate what that narrative is. And to be frank, allow people who have less than ideal um shall we say, uh, outlooks on social media um, <laughs> to control that narrative for their own game, um, it's never going to end well. Yeah. So just, yeah. just don't let it happen. The yeah. public relations <laughs> exist. Exactly. Right. exactly. So anyway. assuming Golden Demon does go ahead, is there a yeah. particular category you're targeting, Josh? Oh, Jules. You know, that... Jules. Jules. Oh, I love, okay. I love um, like some of, okay, I'm a nerd. I watch a lot of anime. All right, and uh, or I have done in the past, and uh, there's the certain scenes and like, if anyone watches or has watched Naruto or that or Goku versus Vegeta, or like that when they're doing the Kamehameha yeah. and he's doing Gallic Gun and just that scene, it's like ah, oh! epic. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of that sort of stuff is stuck. It's like stuck in stuck in my mind for for loads. Even in um, other series, have you guys seen Equilibrium? Yep. When they're fighting with their guns, but they're like. Blocking and shooting at the same time. So amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That like in even games like that, the jewels are like my favorite category um, mm. because I just find it's a nice mix between diorama and um, and single mini. But you've just got two, so um, it's a very excellent way of storytelling as well. There's so much like it's like a freeze frame, and I think in single miniature it's really really powerful as well. But there's something extra that you just don't get. I think diorama is probably a bit too much for me personally. There's too many models that I would need to bring up to uh, uh, at yeah. such a high level. But for dual, you can really empower your painting with the, the kind of embodiment of what those models actually are. Uh, so I'm trying to think of one that was really, really kind of stuck with me. Um, oh, so uh, dueling, dueling Primarchs then, yeah. Two, two yeah. Oh, I mean, I just have him had like like uh, Fulgrim fighting Gilliman, ascended Fulgrim fighting Gilliman before, like when he slits his throat. I mean, that would have been. Mm. But what about what about brilliant. Angron holding up the Warhound Titan? That'll do. That you'll do that well. I mean, Liam, Liam's got one oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't remember that the, in Betrayal where he holds up like, the foot oh, of the uh, Warhound Titan. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, you got this, man. That is anime style. That is. Yeah, no, that's oh, literally gosh. what you're talking about, mate. You need to get a Warhound Titan, Angron, and oh, Warguards hey. on the floor, he, isn't he? Yeah, it's like a display. <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't need to get a Warhound Titan. He just needs the broken foot from your one. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. Well, I did, have a, I did have a question. Like, that's a good point. If you just had the foot, yep. you didn't have the rest of the model. You just had the foot. I mean, in theory, like, why not? Could, yeah. Because the be thing that, what you need to remember as well, it's no longer dual, it's diorama. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, the keg. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. it's dual diorama, which means there's no more. Dual was two <laughs> models. Diorama is a scene. So you could just have one model and, and a Warhound's foot and be like. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That'd be legit. I, I mean, mean, that would work. That'd look <laughs> the nuts as well. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go I mean, uh, was it. Um, it, it? Even before the category changed, uh, I, can't, I think it was Silver, I want to say, um, in Dio from UK this year. Was mm. a nomad just sat with its um, bug um, mount yeah. from Necromunda, yeah. just sat yeah. there chilling, yeah. uh, leaning against it. That was wicked. Yeah, really nice. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about yourselves? What categories? Blood bowl. Yeah. Blood bowl. Blood bowl. Blood bowl. Blood bowl. Blood bowl. No idea what the rules are, but I will probably do something for it either way. Yeah. I mean, I kind of have to do heresy, don't I? If, if nice. Aaron doesn't paint Fulgrim, we're, we're, we are actually allowed to put him in a bin. There is not a hope in hell I turn up 
to UK <laughs> Golden Demon with anything other than Fulgrim, purely and simply because the weekend will be insufferable. Yeah. It will just be, where's well, Fulgrim? Oh. I, don't, I thought you were going to do a Fulgrim. Why didn't you do Fulgrim? Yeah. Fulgrim, Fulgrim, Fulgrim. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Would not let him live it down. No. Why, why do you think people hide what they're doing? There, so we've we've talked about this a lot, mm. and my consensus is it's absolutely worth it. And I was only convinced of that by Albert recently. So Albert turned around and said to me, so he took he he did this dwarf, which was incredible a couple of years ago, took it to SMC and he won best in show. Mm. And then he took it to another show. I think it was Monty. And he said when he went to SMC, there was this massive buzz about it. Everyone was loving it. It was incredible. Then when he took it to, I think it was Monty, but he took it to another comp after everyone had seen it and it was no one cared. And it was really interesting because at the GD at Warhammer Fest, when Sopa brought the Nurgle tank, mm. everyone was like, well, that's clearly going to win the sword. And when people were looking at it, there was no excitement. They were like, oh, that's really cool. But there was no excitement. And then Clayton turned up with a giant and everyone was like, that is the sword. Everyone was talking about it all day. Yeah. There is there is a difference. There's a big difference around hiding your entries. Oh, damn honestly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Wow, interesting. Because the thing is, as well, when you've got three or four months worth of updates, as well, like Aaron, your your your, your Horus is the perfect example, right? Aaron's Horus is fecking amazing, right? I've I've said this to you already. It's it's stunning, genuinely stunning. But by the time that gets to Golden Demon, everyone's going to have seen that intimately. Like everyone's going to know that. What you're saying is so well. That- I just don't have any Instagram posts between now and bloody March. <laughs> I'm not going to paint not anything long. else. No, yeah. no, no, I know. And this is the problem, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, I guess, I get, I, to be fair, I could just be like, here's some tabletop stuff. <laughs> I think if you want to compete, like, I, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an absolute benefit to keeping your stuff secret. Right? And we also know as well, there are certain people in the community who will copy exactly what you've done yeah like that is a thing yeah yeah so there's nothing worse could you imagine could you imagine turning up with full grim and then someone turns up with exactly the same paint job yeah it's hard. because they've copied it or you've got this nice conversion which has happened you've got this really amazing conversion and concept and then someone turns up with exactly the same thing yeah okay. i'm worried about that okay. in caesar sigma yeah, yeah. Concept. Keep seeing all these whips. It's a thing, yeah. mate. A con a concept I'd be pretty uh I'd be pretty yeah. annoyed about. But mm-hmm. if it was a paint job kind of thing, I'd almost I'd almost be bloody minded enough to just be like, come at me. Yeah. Like, no, I mean the paint job is a little bit different because you just be like, well, it doesn't actually matter because as long as like, I painted it better. Exactly. Than you, it's it. just like you think but... you can do it better than me, then fine, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah, they in the same way, if they talk mm. time about it in the same way, then that's a Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Because I've got like my so I'm I want my my main entry is AOS large, and I've got a piece that I'm converting and I've done sculpting on and all sorts of stuff. And if someone turns up with the same model that I've got, the, the same conversion that I've got, I will be broken. Yeah. Like genuinely, I will be a broken man because uh, I've spent three, four, what five months on it now. Yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, I haven't even started painting it yet. <laughs> God. <laughs> so it's it is what it is. Yeah. I mean. I would normally, I would begin lecturing you on why haven't you started painting it? Blah, 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 but bearing in mind, Such we've got like, face. we've got like eight months. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, mate, could you imagine if they dropped it in May? I'd be like panic mode. Oh, immediately. Oh, mate, if they, if they turn around and go, sorry, guys, should have told you earlier, but it's in May. I'm yeah, I'd be in full panic like, mode. Like, no, I'd I'm be deadly like, serious. fuck MPO, like, fuck everything. I've got to do this. No, I, I would, <laughs> I would go for the social aspect. I wouldn't enter. Do you know, I don't think. Oh, do you know what? I I don't know if I would either. I I not not unless I've already got something that's just ready to go because I I don't think I can afford to rush another piece. I don't yeah. want another GD like the last one. I can't have another GD like the last one. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. But on that note, unless there are any additional questions, we have yeah, been going for, for quite a while actually. Yeah. Um, it's probably about time to wrap up. Unless it's anyone has me. any questions, unless oh. chat have any questions that haven't been addressed, speak now forever, hold your peace. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, we can, I guess we can talk, We bit, bit unusual, because we can actually talk about who the next guest is, 
because we've been organized and we have the next guest and really weirdly we've already spoken about them tonight we have because a man yeah. painting minis otherwise known as jamie oh, is, is coming oh awesome that's dope yeah, yeah. oh that's dope oh, i'm so excited for that proper we'll get buzzing. to, oh, get to sit and have a chat with uh with jamie and pick his brains about how he how he creates the stuff he does because his work is so good so so good yeah but so yeah. um Excellent. yeah next guest is a man painting minis josh i did i did make a point of saying this to you the other day when we were talking i think we should we should give josh's new endeavor a bit of a plug oh uh, right what have you just launched my man uh so i've just uh built up the courage to launch a patron Yep. um and it's going quite well it's mainly focused around oil painting so uh, for a long time people have been poking me and asking if i've got videos um and the youtube was a test to see if i can actually enjoy just building up videos and doing that workflow which i do so i said okay a patron let me build a bit more of a dedicated space to help people um and right now it's just for like following my progress um but i'm hoping to start releasing like uh, video content specifically for the patron for people who are a bit more invested and really want to know more um so yeah just come follow hang out um i've built a discord channel and it's slowly growing so it's nice to just hang out with people and oh i didn't know that you got a discord channel yeah yeah it's cool that well it's in the it's in the patreon and the same thing as well so uh, also it's worth pointing out i don't know if you know this josh patreon has just introduced a new feature where you can sign up to patreons as a free member yeah. So you don't get any of the content, but what you'll do is you'll get all of their updates. So if for whatever reason you're interested in oil painting and maybe not ready for it, mm. or you're looking to do it in the future or something like that, sign up to the Patreon now for free. You'll get all Josh's updates. And then when you're ready to do it, you've got it all there ready to go, man. Awesome. Thanks, Liam. Nice. I didn't know That's that. Nice. It's actually nice. It's actually freeing us because Instagram hides content from yeah. followers. Sometimes they totally miss it. Yeah. So it's actually nice to have a dedicated space where if I paint something, um, you can see it. So yeah. And so obviously, if you've got any questions um, in between that, just can get at me on Instagram, um, and I'll try and respond when I can. Thank you. To take good, up man. that. And we need our little date in uh, Italy and Turin sometime. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, ping me. Ping me your Insta over. It would be great to meet up because yeah, my wife wants to move there. Which is she <laughs> wants to move back, so I'm like, ah, well, but my boxes, my will hammer. I'll go take notes. <laughs> <laughs> what will I do? I love that one too. I feel you. You just paint it, but in a really warm place. Yeah. Oh well, the, the <laughs> oils will dry faster. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, exactly. There you go. It's making it easier, right? <laughs> one tip: take lots of money put with you, because I paid 14 euros for it when I was there. 14. <laughs> oh, a little tip in. Do you know what, mate? I've got to be honest. You fucking, you need to let this go, right? I can't. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! You need to let this hang on, go. hang on, hang on. You oh. cannot tell other people to let things go, right? Chrissy show. All I have to say is the word dungarees. <laughs> Right, don't fucking start with me with this again. Right, oh, it's stupid. Oh, right, you do, you do. they're so confusing because they're like, don't fuck off, right? They're, they're not layers. They're all like sloped and shit. Fuck off. Don't right. even start. There we go. No. That's a nice, that's a nice second no. to, to end. You lot have been guess. waiting for that. I swear you've been yeah, trying to trigger me on that yeah, all night. Man. And the best part is now we get to end the, end all of this and just watch you just sit at that seat. Mate, I'm probably doing silence. a little bit. Like, I'm proper riled up. Not... Like. I'm going to go to bed and just chill for the rest of the evening. I'm just going to be sat there in a dark room. Such just a like, dickhead. I can't believe they've done that No again. need for that whatsoever. Oh, you have to tell me this at some point. This is easy to get out. <laughs> right. So, with that said, I guess, it's time for us to head off. We'll catch everyone later. Boys and girls, if you don't follow Josh already, please fix that. His links are in chat. They will be in the description when Liam puts this on YouTube. Yes, they will. Um, Drop him a follow. Sign up to the Patreon, even if it's for free. Follow him on YouTube. Uh, drop him a follow on Instagram as well. Um, and yeah, take it easy, everyone. Don't do anything we wouldn't do. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. Bye. 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 Guys. Bye. Cheers, Bye, guys. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Right, I'm going to take my trousers off.